Good evening. We will now call to order the Chesterfield Township Planning Commission meeting on December 6, 2022. I will call the roll. Mr. Miller is here. Mr. LaBelle? Here. Mr. Demink? Here. Mr. Leonard? Here. Mr. Renault? Here. Mr. Jaworski? Here. Mr. Klonowski? Here. Mr. Carr? Here. Uh, Mr. Brukhart? Here. All here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. Thank you. If anybody has their cell phones on ringing, could you please silence them? Approval of the agenda. I will make a motion to approve the agenda as submitted. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Miller, supported by Mr. Renault. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We have four public hearings tonight, and there are some rules with the public hearing. And uh, Jonathan, were you going to put them up there? Basically, what it says, each person can speak one time, and they have three minutes, and then the timer will go off, and you'll have to sit down. Okay? So they're up on the board now. The first public hearing tonight is rezoning number 361. Oh, unless you have one spokesman for the group. Is that possible? Then they can talk longer. But Okay. Uh, the first rezoning is number 361, requesting to rezone property on the northeast corner of 23 Mile Road and Sh Sherborne from RM2 Multifamily Residential to C3 General Commercial, located at parcel ID 15-09-14-400-033. And 15 09 14 400 34. The address is 34855 23 Mile. I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Miller, supported by Mr. DeBink. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Um, our planner, Stephanie Osborne, will give us a brief history of this. M Mr. Miller, before we start, can I say something? Since a lot of you residents are probably new to this procedure coming to planning, I'm just going to let you know how this goes. Like Mr. Miller said, I'm sure a lot of you here are for the Culvers. I'm the township liaison to the board. I'm the elected person that sits on this board. Mr. Palin is our zoning from the zoning department. He's a township employee. Everybody else, all the other planning commission members are residents like you, just so you all know. They are not elected. They are appointed by the board. I'm the only one that's elected by you, the residents, and Mr. Palin is uh, works for us and then we have our planner which is an outside agency and our council our attorney is Mr. Siebert sitting on the other table just so you know people how this goes I the people regarding Culver's myself and all the other township board members we got your emails I think I got about 45 of them some of you I called back some of you I answered by email or I talked with your uh, homeowners presidents so we definitely know your feelings on the issue I just wanted to get that out there before this starts Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, Ms. Osborne. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so tonight I'd uh, like to start first by saying that um, Planning Commission's role tonight is to provide a recommendation to the Township Board on this rezoning. So nothing will be finally decided tonight um, if, if they do move forward with a recommendation tonight. Um, so what I'd like to do is go through my review le letter for uh, rezoning number 361. Um, as mentioned, this is on 23 Mile Road, and um, the proposal is to rezone from multifamily residential to C3 general commercial. Um, I'm going to go through this letter more thoroughly than maybe I would in other occasions, um, partially because we have uh, a lot of uh, residents here, but also um, because each of the items for consideration really do need to be considered uh, in this process. So first, um, to give you some background on the site, the existing conditions, like I said, it's currently zoned multiple family residential, um, and the proposal is to move to C3. Um, it's a 2.3 acre site that's currently vacant. 
Surrounding the site um, to the north is residential one family. To the east and to the south are general commercial and to the west um, across the street is an additional multifamily residential um, plot. Uh, the master plan designates this area as multifamily um, density, so um, we'll get to that, we'll come back to that shortly. So looking at the items to consider for the zoning map amendment, the first question to ask is um, if the proposed zoning is consistent with the master plan. So again, the master plan designates this parcel as moderately dense multifamily residential, which supports its current zoning of RM2. Um, the surrounding area is also planned for this uh, district. The second criteria or consideration is what impact it would have on public services, utilities, and natural features. Um, and this area is already receiving services, including water and, and sewer and improved roads. Um, it's already been cleared, it's mostly vacant. Um, and so, uh, and, and there's no surface water or wetlands on the site. The third criteria um, is if the applicant has provided evidence that the property cannot be developed or used as currently zoned. And um, we have not received anything from the applicant that shows that they have attempted to develop the property uh, under the um, allowances of a multifamily residential uh, use. The PC, the Planning Commission may wish to explore this with the applicant. The fourth criteria is asking if um, the proposed zoning district is compatible with the surrounding uses. So again, I discussed the districts that surround this parcel, um, but more specifically, the uses that are around it um, include um, directly to the east is a landscaping company um, that would likely generate some traffic, but it would be less than what's um, likely to be proposed with this site um, if the rezoning goes through, which is a quick service restaurant with a double drive through. Um, the parcel to the north is single family residential, um, which is much less dense than what's proposed. And um, the parcel to the south is a Kroger um, with retail uses. I will note um, that, uh, and I, sh I apologize, this should have been in the background um, portion of my discussion, but the, um, what's being proposed eventually for the site is a quick service restaurant with a double drive through, which would be um, a special land use for this site. So um, there could be other, or for this district, so there could be other uses um, that would be permitted that the, um, if the rezoning went through, that the, the planning commission may wish to explore with the applicant as well. The fifth criteria is um, if the, the proposed zoning would place a burden on nearby thoroughfares and how would it compare with the existing zoning um, district. So um, currently 23 mile road is a minor arterial road um, and that's how it's classified in the master plan. Um, a full traffic study would be needed to really understand um, the impact of the proposed changes. And that might be something that you would consider being uh, to require when you look at the special land use proposal. Um, the sixth criteria is um, asking if there's other land currently available, available for this use. Um, currently there's limited vacant land um, that has of the same size that's currently C3. Criteria seven, um, ask if the development of the site under the proposed zoning will be able to meet the zoning district requirements. Um, and so we have uh, received a concept site plan. Um, it shows the general building layout and the driveway spacing um, that is uh, possible um, to meet uh, the standards of the um, C3 district. Um, but we would really need to have a full site plan to fully determine if that's, um, if that's in compliance. Uh, criteria eight um, is asking if rezoning is the best way to address this request or if um, the existing zoning district, the RM2, could be amended to accommodate this use. And um, really that would be um, quite a stretch for what RM2 typically looks like both in Chesterfield and in other communities. Um, so rezoning does seem to be the most appropriate approach here. Criteria nine, um, or consideration nine is that, um, is asking if there's been a change in the circumstances since the adoption of the master plan with this site and there really has not been, um, the subject pro property hasn't changed since the master plan was adopted in 2021. 
And finally, um, the, uh, the final criteria is um, concerning uh, having or making this a spot zone. Um, spot zoning is where you single out a small parcel or a parcel of land um, for a use classification that's different from the surrounding area. And that would be to benefit that single property owner at the detriment of others. So typically, um, we, we try to avoid a rezoning uh, or a spot zoning. Um, so there are three criteria that can help you determine if this would fall under a spot zoning. The first is um, if the rezoning request is consistent with the master plan for the area. And again, um, this request is not consistent with the future land mass land use map for this site. Um, and maybe Jonathan can pull that up for us when you get a second. Um, the future land use boundaries, however, are not parcel specific. So they can be stretched and expanded or contracted um, as needed. It's a, it's a general guideline. Um, and you'll see here that the future land mass, future land use map um, is, not, uh, is not set for commercial for the site. The second criteria or consideration is if the proposed zoning district uh, is a logical extension of an existing zoning district in the area. So right now we're talking about um, rezoning 361, which is the black box on the right-hand corner. Um, or orange is RM2. Um, so you can get a sense of what was planned in the master plan for that area for the future. Um, and going back to the second criteria, um, is it a logical extension of existing zoning districts? So um, it would be an extension of the C3 zoning that's directly to the east of the subject parcel. And then finally, would approving this request grant a special benefit to a property owner or developer? And um, that is for the Planning Commission to uh, discuss and consider. Thank you. Thank you. Is the applicant here that would like to address the, the board? Please sign in, state your name for the record. My name is Mike Currier of Jones Peter Finsky. We're the surveyor and engineer for the property on behalf of the owner. Um, thank you for, and for considering our proposal. Uh, basically, we'd like to start out with, with kind of addressing some of the zoning. Um, it definitely feels like it's a good extension. As you look to New Baltimore zoning to the east, their whole corridor coming into this area is all zoned commercial. Um, and as, as 23 has grown and, and changed, um, as you go up and down along that corridor, it seems like definitely feels like a, cor or a commercial corridor as you drive up and down. Um, <clears throat> Cul Culver's is, is notoriously a good neighbor. Um, they keep their sites clean. We've, we've done these all around the country, all over the Midwest especially, and they've always been a good neighbor. Um, I've had a really good relationship with working with them over the last five years, um, and we've always had really good positive comments and uh, kind of progressed that way. The, um, they not only offer a good neighbor, but they're also offer like job opportunities for young, young individuals or even other individuals in the area. Um, amongst that, we will be in compliance with all zoning for like zoning to be next to each other. Their, um, the residential uh, plat already has a 20 foot buffer of a park already at the back of the subdivision. We would have the six foot fence as required and then we'd have the 10 foot buffer or the 10 foot green belt with the required zoning as well. Um, um, and then um, we'd also be in compliance with uh, section 418 of a quick service restaurant in the, within the zoning compliance, um, make it on the minor road, the right setbacks. Um, and as part of our design, you know, obviously we were in step one of this, but as part of the design, we did take into account those things around us, making the building close to the road, giving distance to the um, residential area to the back and doing the proper screening and making sure uh, all the direction of the signs and lights are in order. Um, but other than that, uh, we, we're just looking to be a good neighbor, looking to make a, a good impact to the community and have capable uh, services of the people that have moved to this area that require those services. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Now, when we bring the public up, you sign in, 
state your name for the record. You have three minutes to talk, and when the timer goes out, we'll tell you your time is up. So, anybody wants to go? Also, we won't answer any questions while he, they're standing at the podium. We'll wait till it's all done. Uh, so first, I've got a couple documents I'd like to hand out really quick. And while he's passing that out, just for the record, we have received um, 23 letters opposing the rezoning that is. Uh, we have received. We hear you. No, no. I got them. He did. I, I got them, folks. I guarantee you, I got them. Okay, my name's Corey Brown. I am representing the HOA uh, for Wellington Place Estates. I'd like to thank all the residents who came out today to support our uh, objection to this rezoning. So we had a list of questions, but I am imagining that you guys may not be open to answering those questions, so I'm just going to walk through them as far as how we see it and how it may be answered. Perhaps there's no other proposals uh, for this uh, site, but as we looked into it, there is nothing listed for sale. Jobs, maybe it's going to bring jobs to the community. We know that Taco Bell, KFC, Subway, they're all suffering right now. They can't stay open. They're closing, 6 p.m., 8 p.m. What happens when they close like Checkers did? It's just going to remain an empty building now. At the end of our sub, that's what we look at. Maybe it's tax revenue from a new high traffic restaurant. But with that comes a major drop in property taxes for us, or property value, sorry. Loss of tax revenue for the township if home values decrease. That's not good for anybody. Variety, we already have 20 plus options right out in front of us. Do we really need another restaurant, another hamburger joint? We already have a couple. There's a couple points that a few of my colleagues that are also representing the board and representing the residents of Wellington are going to make, go a little bit deeper in. But the major question is, is what is this really going to benefit the community of Chesterfield? And there's a couple great items brought up. The master plan, is it part of the master plan? No, it's not. So again, how will this benefit our community? Thank you. My name is Logan Campbell. I'm also part of the same Homeowners Association board for Wellington Place Estates. Um, I represent our community, but I also represent, represent myself and my family. And I've, I'm thankful for everybody who showed up out here. I know some of you might be from the other proposals, but I see a ton of familiar faces from, from our sub, and that, that's wonderful, so thank you. And board, thank you for, for hearing us today. It's great to be able to come in front of the committee today and, and talk about these things. So if you're following along in what we provided, I'm on page five, and I wanna talk about our section. 
from the border of Chesterfield to Baker from 23 to 24, we are majorly residential. Even the buildings that are right in the front are small, low impact buildings. Yes, they are zoned uh, commercial, but you can see the intrusion right into that residential area. Uh, that is something that we, we, we don't want. We share the values of the master plan for Chesterfield. That is something that we've, we've read, we agree with it. We want residential homes for first time buyers, second time buyers. We want single family homes, multiple family homes. We want walkways and parks. You know, we want safety and we want less congestion. Those are the things that the residents want uh, in our neighborhood and in Chesterfield as a whole. And I think that is well documented. Um, I've included some pictures here that show our community. Uh, one of the things you'll see is the entrance to our sub. And I'm gonna talk about that for just about 30 seconds here. Um, but I also wanna mention that on the next page, it also shows our neighbors. Our neighbors are very important to us. Um, we love our neighbors, their their family, their friends. So when we see uh, this type of development proposed for basically being inserted into our community, we wholly object it, uh, object to it. Um, I'm not a public speaker, so pardon the uh, shakiness. <laughs> um, but I've also included, as you go through page eight and then page nine and ten, you'll see the plat plan and the site plan. You'll notice that on both of those documents, the, the road, Sherborne, is identified as the entrance to our sub. That is where homeowners come in, in and out of our sub. And we've seen the plan for the, for the restaurant and we see what that would do to our community. It is directly in our community with no access to 23. Um, the restaurant is one thing. We, we would prefer that this not be rezoned for any purposes. We would welcome new neighbors, new friends to our community. The entrance that I'm talking about is maintained, privately maintained. Did I already go over? Thank you. All right, good evening everybody. Uh, my name is Alan Nicholas. I also am a resident of Wellington Place, Estate, Wellington Place Estates and a member of our HOA board. Tonight I wanna talk to you about some of our concerns regarding the traffic that this will cause in our neighborhood. So as you know, Sherborne is a residential street and heavily used by our residents of Wellington Place Estates as well as uh, our neighboring communities. The intersection of 23 and Sherborne is also a very challenging and dangerous intersection. Trying to make a left out of there and competing with traffic coming out of Kroger, it's a non-starter for most of us. In addition to these issues, we also have pass-through traffic that tries to flow through our neighborhood as well. So we have speeding concerns, considerations to our children who are on the street playing, and there are also no stop signs to enforce drivers uh, and enforcing them to slow down. So while we believe that the majority of our residents actually use Sherborne as their primary means of entry and exit uh, onto 23 Mile, because of the dangerous intersection there, we know that there's a, an increasing percentage of our residents who are choosing alternate routes out onto Baker in order to avoid this intersection. And there is a map there that kind of shows some of those routes that we choose. With any high volume facility that would be placed at this location, with an entrance and exit off onto Sherborne, this would make the road virtually unusable for our residents, forcing others to make choices to make have alternate routes go out, maybe through Cricklewood out onto 23 or further flow through out onto Baker. Those passing through our subdivision, this would increase speeding. This would also increase the traffic through our subdivisions and further put our children's safety at risk. Uh, I also wanna to touch on accidents on 23 Mile Road. I mentioned that this intersection is very, we feel it's a very dangerous intersection. We reached out to Chesterfield PD and New Baltimore PD. Chesterfield reported 36 vehicle accidents between November 2019 and November 2022. 
New Baltimore reported 10 vehicle accidents between November 2017 and November 2022. There are no traffic lights in this area. Again, this makes this a very dangerous intersection with all of the roads leading into 23 Mile at that location. And we believe that a high volume facility at this location would only increase the number of accidents. Uh, the last thing I want to say, you already touched on it, but we would definitely um, be very in favor of a traffic study at this location if you choose to move forward with it. Thank you very much for your time. All right, good evening, everyone. I uh, just want to say I appreciate your time, uh, time you're taking to listen to all of our concerns. Um, my name is Gary Fournier. I'm uh, also representing the HOA of Wallington Place Estates. Um, the uh, point I would like to touch on is that there are already at least a dozen properties we found that are already zoned commercially and are at this are presently vacant um, that can be used for uh, any multitude of uses uh, they can find which are already, what we're looking at is 12 basically eyesores that are already there. Um, so it would only make sense if someone wanted to develop a business to already use one of those, beautify something else up and down. And that, we're just talking about that four and a half mile stretch between I-94 and where uh, the 361 uh, currently is. Um, so rather than rezone this which we uh, I mean I just, we just don't see a point in it seeing as there's already 12 other properties that could be used for this um, as Corey already touched on these are already we've already got all these failing businesses can't stay open can't find enough uh, people to run them there's already more jobs than there are people um, so we really also don't want a 13th or more uh, failed business to have just an empty shell of a building two years from now sitting there uh, just taking up space. Uh, we would rather have homes built there at, sorry, uh, <laughs> homes built there at some point in the future. Um, someone will develop it, I, I have faith. We said there have been empty lots in our neighborhood that sat vacant for years and were eventually built on. Someone come, came through and did build homes there. Um, and uh, I guess that about wraps up my point. I don't want to take too much of your time, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm Maurice Van Pettigan. I am the final member of the board for Wellington Estates. I'm going to fill in what I either didn't have time for or not. Um, so Shoreborn is privately maintained by our HOA association. There is lighting on Shoreborn that is paid for by our HOA association. In the proposed plan, there's removal of lights that were installed at the cost of the HOA association in order to put in their exit and entrance to Shoreborn. Um, this is a detriment to our community, meaning that now everything that we've maintained and taken care of for the last 15 years is now going to be disrupted by somebody putting in a restaurant. Um, the zoning, I do have an issue with some of the stuff in the document that was displayed earlier. It stated that there was a landscaping company to the east of this vacant lot. That landscaping company was demolished six years ago. It is no longer in existence. That lot is vacant. It is exactly the same size as the lot they're looking to build on, so they could potentially use that lot as well. Um, the, the zoning map that is in the master plan shows all the area around that is being residential. In the ma master plan, it calls what the residents want is more homes and safer and less traffic. This would just increase traffic, especially with the projects that are already taking place at the old driving range and also at the vacant lot next to the vacant checkers. That is adding another, I think I calculated it was like 265 homes to add to traffic onto 23 Mile Road. So you couple that with no light at that intersection, multiple entrance and exits to 
uh, Kroger and other businesses across the street, it is a disaster waiting to happen for traffic accidents. It, it's challenging now with just residents using that entrance. If you have customers of a restaurant or any other commercial building coming in and out of that area, it's gonna make it only worse. We have children that are all turning the age of 16 that are driving. Adding to it and, and, and increasing the likelihood of an accident is not something our community wants or needs. The job creation, I went to every restaurant within a thousand feet of there and all of them are looking for 20% more help. So by adding a, another restaurant into an overpopulated area of restaurants is not gonna create jobs, it's just gonna create hardships for those other existing restaurants by taking jobs away from them. So either the new build will end up closing or one of the existing builds is gonna end up closing. You can't have it both ways. There's just not enough people to go around. So rezoning this into anything other than multifamily I think would be a detriment to the community and to Chesterfield. Um, you, you, in the plan, it was showing that it was extending commercial property. Well, one of them's vacant, got bulldozed. The next one is a VFW hall, and the third is a, another lot that was supposed to be vacant because it was supposed to be tore down. Time's when up. They, okay, thank you. Good evening, I'm Brian Powers. I live in the uh, neighborhood directly behind this parcel. Uh, I'm just gonna go right to our master plan for this township because our master plan gives us a clear blueprint for rejecting this rezoning proposal. Goals and objectives for residential neighborhoods. Quote, protect established neighborhoods from intensive commercial activities. Putting a standalone commercial building for a fast food restaurant with double lane drive throughs is the exact opposite of protecting established neighborhoods. Goals and objectives for economic development, quote, promote the physical clustering of commercial establishments. Again, this is a standalone structure with no clustering that our master plan calls for. If we look at the map that was shown earlier and is up there now, this specific parcel is literally on there, spelled out clearly as being earmarked for multifamily, not commercial. And that specific area already has established multifamily condos adjacent that have been there for several decades. And there's also current development of multifamily condos being built right now as we sit in this room. So it's clear that the way this parcel is currently zoned is completely aligned with our master plan. And this request to rezone is a clear deviation from our master plan. Um, the, the lady from Giffels Webster referenced the, um, their, their study, and there was a question in there that asked a, a very interesting question in that report. It has to do with, is there a, is there a person who would benefit from this? W would, would there be a special benefit to the property owner or developer? And the answer is emphatically yes, because the owner requesting this is the same person who developed all the residential property behind it. And if this was such a good idea for the residential communities behind it, let's ask why he didn't do that first. And of course, we all know the answer because putting a fast food restaurant with double lane drive throughs in front of residential neighborhoods would have made it harder to sell his homes to residents and harder to sell his developments to builders. So the, the master plan the master plan says it's a no. We have a rezoning request that gives a very special benefit to the owner at the detriment to the neighboring properties. This is a very, very easy no vote for all of you to make. Thank you. Could we kind of hold the applause till the end?
Hi there, my name is Jamie Freeman. I'm here on behalf of the partners of Wellington Estates. We're from the reserve at Wellington Estates, HOA. We're nestled right in the middle of their subdivision. We're the new Pulte neighborhood. We started a petition uh, because we wanted to make sure that we kept our neighborhood in the exact way that we know and love it. And the reason most of us moved in there, for the safety and security it provides our kids. As of right now, this petition has 539 signatures in three weeks against the rezoning of this for commercial use. This petition states all the reasons that we've heard today and more. And I'd like to bring two more reasons to the table on top of offering up the petition and the comments wherein. Another reason I moved all the way from Dearborn to Chesterfield, specifically this neighborhood, is because we have a son with autism who does something called eloping. He runs without any abandon into, tr he'll run into the streets, towards ponds, anything else. We actually have six children in our subdivision of 58 houses with autism. And we constantly rejoice in the fact that we have an amazing, safe, non-traffic congested area that we can just breathe a little easier at night, knowing that if our kids run off, there's not traffic. If we add a fast food restaurant there, not only is it gonna increase the traffic on that street, it's gonna cause more congestion over through Cricklewood Boulevard. Which brings up my third point. Cricklewood Boulevard is a private street. I know that because that my husband is the president of our HOA and their association is currently in legal talks with Pulte, our builder, because of the damage done to their streets by the construction traffic. Who is gonna answer? for the additional construction, construction traffic damage to these private streets, and then what's gonna happen to prevent even more traffic from going down the private Cricklewood Boulevard? What's going to happen instead is that Sherborne is going to be even more impacted than it is today. And my final point, I can't even take my kids up to the Walter and Mary Burke Park because I can't get through any type of a safe sidewalk or crosswalk or anything at the corner of Sherborne and 23. We are bound to our neighborhood. Please, please keep it safe for us. Thank you for your time. Hi, my name is Ashley Wagon, and I am the house right behind this property that they're trying to buy for Culver's. So it is my backyard. So out of everyone here, I feel like we are just getting slapped with this because this is my backyard. Um, I'm recently engaged and was looking forward to starting a family, but how can my kids play in the backyard if there is a commercial property there? Also an issue would be the pollution coming from this property, even if they say they're neighbor friendly. Um, and that doesn't include all the traffic and this six foot fence that's gonna protect my future children and my property from a whole parking lot full of semis. Not to mention all the noise pollution on top of regular pollution. Um, so I feel very passionately about this. Everyone brought up really good points tonight. So there's no need to elaborate on what was already said, but I am not looking forward to having potentially a fast food restaurant in my backyard with a six foot pen. So, where that house right there. And Kroger, I can't even turn in my sub after work because there's so much traffic from Kroger. I almost get hit weekly from these cars just going to Kroger and Taco Bell and the bank. So adding in a property on the other side, it is literally gonna be a nightmare and those accident rates will probably triple. So, that's all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, my name is Bill Caton and I represent Cricklewood HOA, along with everybody else in here. Um, I'm gonna make it short and sweet because most of what I was gonna say has already been said, but I'm gonna repeat a few of the things. My biggest concern with Sherburn, if they put this in there, the traffic back up there, 
My wife and I moved out here from Warren 17 years ago. I live right off on 23 Mile Road at Cricklewood. And one of the things I loved was I could get up in the morning and walk across the street to Kroger's and go shopping. Or whatever I wanted to do, go out, walk across to get my hair cut. That's why I moved out here, because everything was right here. Now it's so dangerous, it's even dangerous trying to get across with a car to go to Kroger's. Uh, or walking is almost insane, it's almost impossible. The traffic is so bad now, and putting a fast food restaurant there is going to make it even worse in front of Kroger's. The other concern I've got at Sherborne is when you have the traffic in there, just like the other lady mentioned about Cricklewood, it destroys the roads. Sorry, more cars, more damage, more work on it. It costs money for the upkeep. We in Cricklewood are fighting now because we're paying for the road because of the traffic going through there. And if I live back there and I come through to come out here on 23 Mile Road on Sherborne, it's all backed up because of the traffic from the restaurant, where am I gonna do? I'm gonna cut over and cut the Cricklewood and come out. It's a lot easier. That's the only logical thing to do. No offense, I don't want you on my road. <laughs> I have enough trouble getting out of there as it is. Um, the other thing I want to bring up is someone mentioned about um, property value. I've been a licensed realtor for 35 years in Warren. I'm fairly familiar with the rules and what's going on. There is no way in hell this is going to help our property value. It's not going to do anything to help it at all. That's all I've got to say. Thank you. Address. That's what's taken you all so long. Hi there. I'm Jenny Campbell. Um, my husband made me come up here. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, I am just going to touch base a little bit on what Ashley shared. She's one of the homes that is directly behind where the plot is supposed to be um, changed into a Culver's. Um, even with a six foot, 10 foot, I don't know, 12 foot, whatever the idea was for a fence, it will not help. Our homes had to, uh, in our neighborhood, dealt with um, some water issues, we'll just put it that way. And so some of the newer homes in that neighborhood, are, they look like they're on stilts almost, they're really high up. So maybe that might work in some circumstances. It will not help in, in, in this circumstance, okay? Um, in Culver's, I, I love food. I eat it every day. Um, and, and if you want to be a friendly neighbor, we're going to ask that maybe find a different plot of land to do that. You will, I mean, that if you want to come to Chesterfield, come on. But please pick a different spot. Okay, thank you. Good evening, my name is Ken Doherty, and like everybody else who has been up here, I thank you all for taking the time to listen to us today. Um, and, and an awful lot has been said, so I don't need to repeat all of that, and a lot of it is very, very on point. A um, Couple things I just wanted to mention. Um, and I imagine many of you have been with the, uh, the township for a while. That area seems to have been cleared about 20 years ago for this residential development. If you look at some maps, you'll see at one time when that was all wooded land. Uh, and it was sort of, a, my wife and I have been there since 2010, it was sort of a failed subdivision as a result of the subprime lending in 2007. So most of the people who have purchased in there purchased after us in 2012 when the land um, went back up for sale, went through a couple of hands <coughs> and they began developing all the property um, and it sold fairly quickly. There was some multi multi-family development that sat empty. Some of it's been rezoned and others single homes and other has just been built. So my point is if you were a landowner 15 years ago, that property has been sitting dormant. And I could see if I was the owner that I'd be looking for some form of relief. But if you look at the neighborhood right now, all that land has been sold for the purpose that the master plan and the zoning has supported 
Um, and this isn't land that would sit fallow or sit empty if it was not rezoned for some other purpose. The other point that I want to make that I don't think was brought up is that there is a wooded parkland, I don't actually know what it's actually called, it used to, I've been told it was called a park, that runs behind the homes on Brushford, runs behind some of the homes um, on both sides of Brushford and behind that new development. A lot of wildlife back there that adjoins all the way up through 25 Mile Road. Um, there are deer back there, there's raccoons back there, and many of the homeowners bought the land for that, not only for the feature, but for the property value of that. And so once you put a little bit of commercial activity, a little bit more volume, you're just gonna impact that wildlife. Um, there's, I believe there's wetlands back there and so on and so forth. Um, so again, it, it affects property value, but, but most of the people that have bought there have bought since 2012. They bought it specifically, even if they didn't know the master plan or the zoning, they bought it specifically for the kind of community it is. And we're just looking to not change that ambiance of the community. And Chesterfield in whole is that kind of a entire township in terms of being primarily residential, quiet, so on and so forth. All the emphasis that's been made about that very particular intersection and its dangers, putting two exit, you know, an entrance and an exit to face out on the residential street, not face out onto 23 Mile, just seems interesting, particularly because there's a turn lane that they would be disregarding that's even going to further impact traffic. I'm all, I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me. Good evening. One of you made a comment about applause afterward. I have no promises what's going to happen after I speak. <laughs> My name is Jason Mills. I live at 51295 Brushford within eyesight and earshot of the proposed property. I would like to thank my neighbors for coming out to support each other. This is a wonderful show. This is why we have such a fun neighborhood. We all stick together. I'd like to thank our HOA for the research they did. I would like to directly make comments regarding Culver's statements. That was a obviously well-prepared statement in advance that was undoubtedly written by their legal counsel. It was also a pack of lies. They sat here and spoke about being a good neighbor. Well, a good neighbor does not come in and knock down the existing property of their neighbors. A good neighbor does not park in their neighbor's driveway or drive across their property. And a good neighbor does not put a fast food speaker in their backyard pointed at mine. So you guys need to think really long and hard about what the impact is. Obviously, there's a lot of people upset. In Culver's, you should get the point. We don't want you here. Pack up and leave. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Alex Zeleny, 51732 LaShawn Drive. Like many, I'm from Wellington Place Estates, so thank you guys for hearing us out tonight. Thank you guys for all attending and showing up. I agree with the previous comments opposing the rezoning for the reasons already stated, including traffic safety, general safety due to, due to an increase in transient visitors, so a lot of strangers coming and going in the neighborhood where our kids are playing, and the potential impact on home values. I'd also like to reiterate that the adjacent Cricklewood Estates and Wellington Place, the streets are privately owned and maintained. And I know some people have talked about that already, but if I'm going out on Sherborne and there's a backup of cars coming out of Culver, I'm gonna go through Cricklewood and that's gonna cause an undue burden on the residents in those neighborhoods. Um, finally, I'll keep it short and sweet. The number of traffic incidents illustrates well the challenges that already exist at that intersection. I'd ask that the Planning Commission, prior to making a recommendation to the board, require a traffic study and share the recommendations with the community. Thank you guys for hearing us out. Thank you guys for showing up tonight.
Good evening. My name is Danielle Gorney, and um, I live off of Billery K. And um, sh sh where Billery K is, is if you come down Sherborne, Billery K is your first street, where I'm actually a neighbor of Ashley. And uh, so I live two houses down from Ashley. So my backyard faces 23 Mile. I have three boys. I have a 13-year-old, a 9-year-old, and a 6-year-old. One of the reasons why we bought in this house, in this neighborhood, was the small town feel that we get from this neighborhood in the community in Chesterfield. My boys run amok over this neighborhood. Every neighbor knows them. They love them. They treat them like family. But it's the safety for me that I have an issue with. Um, not only with just a restaurant coming in, a truck stop coming in. Um, I don't, I mean, we just put a pool in our backyard with a nice, beautiful deck. We want to be sitting on our deck. I mean, 10 feet is from us to you. I'm going to have the garbage smelling, the speaker going as I'm sitting in my backyard trying to hang out in the pool with my family. Our property value will decrease immensely if this commercial zoning happens. Your community will de decrease immensely. This cannot happen. There is a neighboring subdivision behind us with a park, Maynard. The associate, the, what we want in that, put a, put a park there for the kids. Do something residential for the kids if that's all about using that space. So I don't have a big prepared space, but it affects me directly, and I don't want it. I don't want it for my kids. I don't want it for my family. I don't want it for my community. Thank you. Hello, my name is Stacey Schreckmeyer. I am definitely not a public speaker, so I apologize for any wavering voice or anything. I will try to speak as loud so you can all hear me. I come to you pleading as a parent. I know all of you probably have kids, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, and if you bring in a Culver's that not only is going to bring traffic from all over the place, you wanna have a um, semi-stop, camper stop, that's also going to bring in more crime into our neighborhood. You're talking sex trafficking. Yes, I understand. It could come in anyways. It could come in from all different places. But you're now upping our risk. We have a lot of children in our neighborhood, in our inside neighborhood. We've got teenage girls. We've got small boys. We've got, and as you can tell, just in the news the other day, a FedEx driver coming and dropping off. Yes, I know it can happen there too. Just took... A, daughter, a little girl playing in her neighborhood and killed her. If you bring in this Culver's, you're bringing in so much more traffic to our neighborhood that we would not have with if that wasn't there. So I plead to you guys as parents, grandparents and whatnot, think about that aspect as well. My aunt lived in a neighborhood where she was backed up by a, a strip mall and she had dumpsters in her backyard. They had a six foot cement wall but that did not stop her backyard from being infested with rats. That is a health issue. I have had breast cancer and I survived it. And this will bring not only other issues, health issues, but we're talking small kids we have to worry about. They have a future and they have to deal with these rats coming into their yard where they play and get all these horrible diseases that could later affect them with having children of their own or whatnot. I just ask that you Please think about that when you're talking about rezoning in the area as well. Thank you. Hi, my name is Charissa Rodriguez. I 
live in um, the Wellington Place Apartments. I'm a teacher, not a preacher, um, but I just wanted to say that I have a lot going on in my life, like teaching, and I'm going for my master's degree, and, but I wanted to come and speak upon this issue. Um, I became a resident two years ago, and my place is plenty big for a family, and um, my plans for the future would look like having two kids and um, staying there, and I enjoy the park, I enjoy that the stores are close, um, there's a lot to enjoy in this neighborhood. It's very quiet and it's very upsetting and I just want to say no to Culver's. So please, thank you. See you, Mr. Mills. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Doug Mills. I'm not a resident of this particular subdivision, but I have family members and grandkids that live in that subdivision. That is a tight-knit subdivision like I've never seen. And I've spent 35 years as a law enforcement officer. I've been participating in traffic studies a couple times, although it wasn't my main job. However, it doesn't take a rocket science to know, and I'm gonna expand on the traffic issue because they've said enough about the subdivision and I can only speak to what I really know. Anybody that's driven on 23 Mile Road in that particular area with all those cars coming at them, all those places like Kroger's, the Chinese place, the, you name it, you're taking your life in your own hands now. I've been personally almost involved in a couple of head-ons in the center turn lane. You need to stop and take a look at what this is going to not only do to the people that live there, but the people that drive that road that don't live there, that live in the area, that are residents of Chesterfield, New Baltimore, and everywhere else that traffic, travel down that road. This is a nightmare. And you're only going to compound on it if you allow this to happen. I have nothing personal against Culver's. I've eaten near the one hall road. I'll go there. I'll drive three miles to get a hamburger if I have to to, to keep people safe. It's just, you really, I'm speaking from experience in traffic, you need to really take a hard look, and I don't think anybody can argue that fact about the traffic issue. Thank you for your time. Hello, my name is Linda Larson and I am a resident of Wellington and um, I did speak to several of you so I appreciate your phone calls back and your emails back and thinking about this just with traffic and things like that as a mother um, it makes me very sad but I asked my kids I have two kids um, how they would feel and so my daughter wrote my speech so I'm reading this um, from my nine-year-old hello my name is Linda Larson and I <laughs> It's great, she put my name in there. Um, and I do not think they should build a Culver's on the corner of our street. They shouldn't because it is hard enough to make a turn and there's already like 20 people driving in and out and then you're yelling and then there isn't a lane to turn into and if you have to get to your meeting in the morning so Mrs. Whitfield doesn't yell at you and you're running late and you get stuck there and there's other people driving in and out and then we're gonna have to go other, no periods at all, just total run on. Um, and then you have to go on different streets to take 23 mile and then you might be driving faster because we're running late plus I like to walk to Brandenburg. I'm a big walker in the neighborhood. I love to walk. Um, I never question my safety. I walk all the time. Um, I know everybody in the neighborhood. Um, and so she said, I like to walk to Brandenburg and if people are driving back and forth, I could get hit by a car. I also think that it would be smelly. <laughs> and then at the bottom she put, and what if someone stole Isaac? So, um, I am proud of all of us for coming out here. I think that you know um, how we feel and we appreciate your time. Thank you. Anybody else?
Hello, my name is Devin Hudlin. I am 18 years old. Uh, apologies for any wavering of the voice. I am also not a very big public speaker. This is a big step for me, but I feel very passionate about this. I do not have a driver's license. So everywhere I commute within the area, I live right off of 23 Mile Road, right across the street from Kroger, is by foot or by bicycle. So if I want to commute to a friend's house within a neighboring or same subdivision, I go by foot or bike. If I want to commute to Kroger or a gas station or even to my job, I am crossing those busy streets. So the addition of a Culver's in this area would only contribute to, as we've stated before, more traffic in the area, which is only more hazards that I myself has to worry about as someone without a driver's license. So on behalf of others like me who can only commute by foot and do not have a means to cross the already busy road, I would just like to say that uh, the addition of this Culver's is nothing more in my eyes than a hazard with a city that already has a million other fast food restaurants right on 23 Mile Road. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, hi, um, my name's Kim Nickel. I live in uh, the Chesterfield, or the um, Wellington Place condos. I'm actually uh, part of the board there. I'm on Northrop, and that street runs in between Sherborne and Cricklewood. So our concern um, is the same as everyone else's. We stand with the neighbors. We are not in favor of having that Culver's either. Uh, due to the fact of uh, the increased traffic that will go through on Sherborne, and if they're going to cut through to get to Cricklewood, they're coming down our street. So also ours is privately maintained. We pay to have that um, plowed and um, maintained. So, you know, if that traffic's coming from Sherborne, it's going to come right down our street to get to Cricklewood. So I just wanted to say we're with our neighbors, um, our condo association, everyone in there, we're not for the Culver's either. Thank you. Anyone else? I just have to extend the line, sorry everybody. Jared Budd, uh, Wellington Place Estates as well. It's a democratic society. You guys are going to vote. If you guys are here for the Wellington Place and you vote no, raise your hand. I think we just made a decision. Anybody else? John Spica, 53978 Connor Drive. I don't live in the neighborhood, but I live in uh, Chesterfield Township. And in Chesterfield, we all support one another, no matter what. I just, just a reminder to the board that my philosophy and saying has always been Chesterfield first. What does that mean? It means putting the residents in the township first. It boils down to doing what is right for the residents. The individuals who pay their taxes and live in this township and support our businesses and community. The people that care and love their community. I see a lot of love in here and I see a lot of care. And this is why my wife and I moved to Chesterfield because we love Chesterfield, we love the community, and the right thing to do is to not put that culvers where the petitioner wants it. Thank you, good night, and I want to thank the residents for showing up 
in voicing your concerns to the board. Thank you again. Anybody else like to speak? Hello, my name is Craig Jones. I'm also in that um, the Wellington Place sub. And one thing we haven't brought up is um, the buses. So it's a huge turn for the buses. Kids stand out there. Um, just seems like there couldn't be a worse place to put this. And that's all I have to say. <clears throat> There's nobody else. I'm going to bring it back to the board. Um, would the applicant please come back to the podium? So we, we definitely heard all your comments. Uh, we, we appreciate y'all coming out as well. You know, we look forward to working with you guys, and, and if eventually we could come to this community, we'd all want you as customers as well. So we, we definitely value you. Thank. Thank you for coming out. So a few, a few things just to kind of a quick address. Um, this parcel does um, not have access to 23 as, as it was deeded away in 1983. It would have to access part of Sherborne as it was designed. No matter what development ever comes here to be of value to the township, there will always be traffic in there. We understand this. We un it's all part of the thing. A traffic study will need to be done um, to kind of work all this whole system in. Even if you had multi-homes in there, and th those would be 24 hour day, traffic coming in and out. Culver's operates from 10 to 10. So your peak morning hours, you're not gonna have conflicts with Culver's. Um, the, the parking spaces in the back, those are intended for local use. There's, you know, obviously with the lake, you got lots of people with boats, you have people with trailers, um, small RVs, or, you know, school buses from kids going to and from, you know, sporting events. It's meant to um, serve the local community, not be a burden. It's not meant for semis. It's not designed and, and um, will not work engineering wise for that. Um, but as many of you all mentioned that you moved here for a quiet community and, and wanted to be signed or just to be a quiet and tight knit group. Part of that all changed. The only consistent in life has changed. So as you all moved here, everything changed. Needs changed and more stuff is needed to meet those people that can continue to move here. So as the township grows and becomes bigger, there are certain um, things that have to be in place for all everyone to live in this area. So we're, we're looking to be part of the team. We're looking to be a helpful neighbor. Um, and um, it is one of the few areas along 23 Mile that does have a D-cell lane. You know, if, if you go up and down um, that road, there's very few that do have that in place. Um, that would definitely help the situation um, as cars come into there. I understand you, you guys travel this much more than I do. So I, I understand what you're saying, but th there is also engineering behind a lot of this stuff. Good evening, my name is Mike Hausman. I'm representing the developer as well. Um, I just wanted to add a couple of things. Um, first, Culver's, I, I build tons of their Culver's locations and they are good neighbors. They don't wanna be someplace where people don't want them or they don't wanna come someplace and make it unsafe. Um, so I think procedurally, we usually would hear all the public hearing tonight and then move it forward. We would love to take that time because I think there's actually four weeks between now and the next meeting to do a traffic study, take a look at the, and, and just see what it does to that intersection. If it does downgrade it from a A, B, C, or D, Culver's doesn't want to be there. If, it's, if we start creating a situation where it's a C or D traffic condition at that intersection, they don't want to be there either. But, uh, you know, we welcome that time to do that. Um, and again, I think they're, Culver's is a very good neighbor. They have ice cream. They really complement a neighborhood. They're not, you know, they say they're a quick serve restaurant or they're designated as that often, but they're really, and I build 60 uh, restaurants a year, they're more of a fast casual. Only 40% of their um, traffic goes through the drive through In comparison, a Taco Bell or a McDonald's, which does have a lot more traffic, they send about 80% of their traffic to the drive through So, Culver's is really more of a sit-down restaurant than it is when people use the word quick-serve restaurant. So I wanted to add that, and we'd welcome that time to 
you know, review the traffic, see if we can find some alternatives to make sure it's safer um, before you make your final decision. Thank you. Oh yeah, lastly, just we are not, we're not a corporate Culver's <coughs> we're franchisees, so we do these um, ourselves. So Ed, who's here, he's gone through training, he live in the community. So I own five of them across Michigan, we're in communities, we always want to be you know, wanted, so we hear you loud and clear. And I don't want to be, and Ed doesn't want to be anywhere where people don't want us. So we'll take it back, you know, we'll look at it. And, uh, you know, we don't want to start off on the wrong foot either. We want to be a great restaurant in the community for family. So definitely hear everything you said. It's really cool that the family or, you know, the community came out. Um, and, and I hear you loud and clear. So if we bring a Culver's here, we want it to be, you know, wanted. We want everybody to be on board. So thank you for the feedback. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> With that, I'll bring it back to the commission. Too late to speak. It's too late to speak. <coughs> the last one. <coughs> Thank you. My name is Terry Wilcox. I live in Wellington State Place. Uh, Wellington Estates also. <coughs> thank you for everyone who has been speaking. And I do want to say thank you, Franchise America, for speaking. Um, I hope that you're listening to what they have to say because what I heard was a lot of <coughs> uh, rhetoric. This could be happening. This should be happening. But you also have a room full of people and a lot more that aren't even here tonight that are saying this is this is us, this is our community, this is what we want and we don't want Franchise America here. So they can talk percentages, they can say how much they wanna be friendly, we all love ice cream, whatever. But what we want is a safe neighborhood. We live in this neighborhood, we love our neighbors. I have seven houses, eight houses around me, side of me, around me, 12 kids. I am an empty nester, my husband and I, but we watch for those 12 kids. We watch for everybody in the neighborhood because we want this neighborhood to stay safe. So what I wanna say is thank you for listening to what I have to say for this last moment. But again, Franchise America, thank you. Take it elsewhere because we want our community to stay the way that it is. Thank you. Thank you, I'll bring it back to the commission, Mr. Demink. Well, a lot was stated tonight. I'd like to thank everybody who's sh shown up. We all know 23 is terrible. It's, and a lot of you probably don't know, but where the driving range was, that's a large apartment complex going in there. I forget how many hundred units are going in there. So there's gonna be more traffic on 23. Peckers also. So, I mean, I've been around this township since 23 was a two lane highway. So I probably know it better than a lot of you. I was born and raised here. It's definitely a different thing. Um, I specifically don't care for the drive-in off Shelbourne. Uh, all the roads, I don't know if you residents know, are owned by the county. The township does not maintain the roads. Now, like Cricklewood, private road. So when that gets destroyed, the homeowner's got to repair it under your HOA and you got to do an SAD. Same with the subdivisions. You might have a county road, but the county doesn't come in and fix your roads. Then you got to do an SAD like we've done in other subdivisions in the township. So I get what you're saying. Feeling, uh, Jonathan and I were looking on the computer. We're pretty sure Shelbourne is a county road. For one reason is you've got a green sign on the corner. So it's not a private road. You, granted, your lights are there and your HOA maintains it. But we looked here on the thing and with county right away, it is a county road, just FYI, just letting you know that. So I'm not disagreeing. It'll be up to the members on what we decide to do. You gave us a lot of great comments. I'm glad you all came here. Like I said, I got all the emails being the board liaison. I know where they reported it to all my associates that are sitting up here. So I'll turn it over to them to let them make their decision. But I thank you, your comments are great. I fully understand living in a subdivision and with a, another fast food there, like I say, specifically, I do not like the drive coming in off, off your street. It should be in off 23 if anything, but we all know what it's like there. And like I say, there's only, you know, have the light down at 23 in Jefferson then you have the light down at DWC. 
and, and the one at Baker. You, you can only put them in. People ask for more lights down by that uh, Henry Ford Medical Center. The county decides where they put them in when they do a traffic study, not the township. And with regards to sidewalks, yes, we know there's a lot of space in this township where they need sidewalks. We have a plan now where we're filling in sidewalks, new subdivisions have to have them, certain new streets, your mandated sidewalks. If not, you have to put money in an escrow account. So we're definitely trying to get sidewalks in. If you look over by Presbyterian Village, they ran a sidewalk all there along 23. So it's coming slowly, but yes, we are moving towards sidewalks to make it more friendly, walking, bicycles, and stuff like that. And I fully understand. So I would thank everybody who showed up here tonight, and I'll turn it over to my colleagues. Uh, Mr. Burkhart. This is my first meeting. <laughs> <laughs> they, told, they told me they're not all like this. <laughs> I've been a, a resident of Chesterfield now for two and a half years. And I have to tell you, I'm very impressed with the turnout tonight. And, uh, and we're listening. Thank you for being here. Uh, Mr. Carr. Um, yeah, so trying to be as objective as possible because you got to understand our job is to be objective. Um, so we do take in all the feedback and we understand that you guys have a personal interest in that property. Um, but uh, like me, I have four children here and I'm, I've, been a mem I've been here 23 years. So I'm very familiar with it. Um, that's why I volunteered for this board as an architect. Um, but trying to stay objective, um, nobody wants development behind their properties. You're not the first ones to come here. Um, again, looking at the property itself, no, I don't agree that it's probably the best fit for a Culver's. Um, but from a board perspective, I would be open-minded to, you know, if they, I think that they can't just follow the minimum standards of the site if they were going to, if we were going to consider it. I think that they have to go above and beyond. I do think they need to address the north side and provide a bigger buffer. Something to screen that a little bit better. I do agree that it should not be off of the county road, Sherborne, but uh, unfortunately, because of the deeded issue, I don't know how we get around that as a board. Um, I guess what I'm saying is, I agree it's not the best fit. I can't, you know, we'll obviously make a decision one way or another as a collective, as a board, but I do think if we consider it, there has to be quite a few concessions made um, on behalf of the developer. So that's my take. Mr. Renault. Yeah, I just had a, again, thank you everyone for participating. This is not my first meeting, but uh, this is the largest turnout I think I've seen in the four and a half years I've been doing this, so thank you. But I did have a question for the developer. Um, any particular reason why you chose this particular parcel when there are a number of commercial properties that are out there and available? We did look at um, a couple other sites. Uh, also would have had to be rezoned. Um, also had to um, uh, had some opposition with neighbors before on, on other sites. Um, looked up and down this stretch, um, just not a lot of opportunities. Obviously, if we are a, a Culver's, you would like to be by um, a grocery store, so that that was it. There is there is opportunity right there. It is tight, but like I said, we've been doing this for. Um, I've grown up in the restaurant industry. Um, never had this much opposition to one. So like I said. Definitely, uh, definitely want to come in and start up on the right foot. People need to understand the process also. So we, you know, started looking at this property beginning of the summer to get through the process. You know, they, every, they don't go every month. So it wasn't like we just showed up today and, and said, hey, we want to do this. And we know everybody's upset. I put the sign out two weeks ago, and then we realized people were upset. So before that, we're doing all this process, going through the steps to get it. And I uh, didn't know that there was uh, Opposition. I do have culvers that butt up with a fence to neighbor, you know, to houses, um, and never have had, you know, like I said, this type of opposition. So really, there is a ton of stretch um, on the corridor, but not um, great opportunities for people who are looking to sell. So that's how we ended up with this one, and then we just reached out to the guy. Sorry, oh, that was a long okay. answer. No, nope, fair enough. Thank you. That was my only question for you, Mr. Jaworski. Yeah, I know this is a great presentation. Everybody brought up a lot of good ideas or good points to make. And just to reiterate, expand on what was said earlier and the gentleman that was just up here, just understand that this is the process. The process is the applicant presents it to, the, to Jonathan and, and the township. 
Um, they go through the application process. It's then added to the agenda, which then brings the public to hearing here. We listen to everything that the public has to hear. Um, we are actually residents and volunteers as well of the community. Um, I wish there was just this much support with everything else that we do. <laughs> um, <laughs> so just understand, it's, it's, not, it's not like we've in brought these things to the board. We're here to be part of the process, and you're part of the process too. So collectively, we make the best decisions that's the best decisions for not only the residents, but for the community at whole. So we have to look at everything right now. Again, the process, it's here, public hearing. You made your points. Um, take the roads completely out of the equation. Uh, you've made a lot of good points on why it should not be rezoned. And that's really why we're here today, is to discuss rezoning of the property, okay? So again, I just wanted to throw my two cents in about the process so everybody's aware. So if you move forward and you see other stuff going on, I mean, other development, in your community? Is it a park? Is it a strip mall? Is it anything? This is where your, your voice is heard. And we're, we're not here just to make decisions. We're here to make the best decisions for you folks. Thank you. Mr. Klonowski? Yeah, i just like to say that I can kind of relate to how you feel because I've farmed in this community my life, for a whole life. And every time I see something like a subdivision go in, <laughs> <laughs> but it is part of progress and at some point, commercial and residential meet, unfortunately. And uh, we do our best to try to uh, make sure that it's not too much conflict in that type of uh, get together so that's all for me mr leonard yes um i've uh, i've lived in the community since 1986 so um I'm, I'm very encouraged to see a whole lot of faces out here tonight as it's been said that uh, we normally don't see a lot of people we're lucky we see a half a dozen people uh, but when it's controversial and it has an impact like this um, I'm, I'm really glad to see that everybody showed up um, I've been involved with the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals with the Township and the Planning Commission for over 20 years. So I've been uh, privileged to be involved with a lot of things. The master plan was one of the most recent things that we spent years on. And the sidewalks and the uh, bike paths and different things that we're trying to bring in, uh, it's long overdue. And uh, so we've been working on that now, <coughs> excuse me, for a number of years. And we had an open house uh, at a few different locations for when we were uh, putting the master plan together. And uh, the bike paths and the sidewalks was probably the, the, the number one thing. So as far as the community, you know, a real negative impact, it, it's not helpful. So we'll just kind of go through the process and see where it goes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, one order of business I would like to get out of the way with the applicant. If the applicant could please come back to the stand. Um, there was a statement made that you'd like the opportunity to uh, postpone any kind of a decision being made for a period of time um, in order to allow you to have a, um, a traffic study. I'm not prepared to make a decision this, tonight, which is my right, which, um, you know, if it does come down to a vote, I'm not going to make a decision tonight. I'm going to vote to not make a decision tonight. Um, but I want to be so I want to be date specific as to when you need time to regroup, be it um, a traffic study or be it maybe find another piece of property. Correct. Well, uh, just so we have meetings on January the third, January the seventeenth, February the seventh, February the twenty second, twenty first. How much time do you need? Well, if I just could. so that these folks have some kind of an idea if, you know, if they want to attend the meeting that evening, they can. Sure. Um, I'd, I'd have to check with my consultant that does the traffic studies. I actually was on the phone with him this evening on the way down. Um, you know, usually it's four to five weeks, so it would probably be the later meeting in January that we would look to be in. Um, but I'd like to be able to confirm that with him and then get back to Jonathan, if that's okay. I believe okay. that part of our, our I, I think we have to be date specific this evening. Well, I would go the 
the 17th, if you're okay with that, Mike. There's, um, there's one on February the 7th. You want to give yourself a little cushion, you could go until the 20th of February. Mr. Well, Chairman, it depends if yes. you close the public hearing or not. If if the public hearing is still open, it has to be date specific. Um, if it's closed, then it does not. Well, that was going to be my next question, if we're going to close the public hearing. We're going to close the public hearing? Okay, so part of my motion is I'll give you up to six meetings to uh, six meetings to respond. Okay. And I would, I would ask that the public, if they do want to hear our response, that you watch the township website to see what's on the agenda so that you have an opportunity to come that evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. There's nothing else. I'm going to make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion by Mr. Miller, supported by Mr. Demink. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. So Mr. we'll Chairman? make a decision on our February uh, the 7th. Is that what I'm going to give you up to six meetings if we do close. Okay, up to six meetings. So just watch the website. I'm sure it won't be at least until the second meeting of January. Meeting to, you could get the uh, dates right on the website. No. Yeah, that, that was your motion, right, to table it, Rick? Yeah. I didn't make a motion, but I can. Yeah, we can give a public hearing. Yeah, let's okay. make that motion. Okay. Do it now? Or yeah, do it now. So we're all done tonight. We close the yeah. public hearing, right. so it'll... Mr. Chairman, just as a matter of business, I think I'd like to make we, a motion. We just made a motion to close the public hearing. I'd like to make a motion to um, to give the applicant up to six meetings to um, for us to make a decision. With that, I'd like to make a motion to postpone the decision for up to six meetings. We have a motion by Mr. LaBelle, supported by Mr. Leonard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. No, no. Public hearing. If you, that was the first motion they made, ma'am. We're going to take a five minute break. Is there anybody here from Forest View? Forest View? Yeah, there's just this one left, though, just so you know.
Five minutes is up. Our second public hearing tonight is rezoning number 362. They're requesting to rezone property on the northeast corner of Gratiot Ave and Hickey from C1 local commercial to C3 general commercial located at parcel ID 1509-04152-002. I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Miller, supported by Mr. Renault. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Ms. Osborne, would you like to give an overview of this rezoning? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, this is the same process that we went through with the last um, public hearing. Uh, we're looking again at a rezoning and um, it will be up to the Planning Commission to make a recommendation to the Township Board as to whether or not to rezone. Um, so again, I'm gonna walk you through the letter pretty in quite a bit of detail. Um, I'll try to move a little bit more quickly since you're um, familiar with the process and it's fresh in your minds. So uh, for th this applicant is proposing to uh, change their zoning from local commercial C1 to general commercial C3. It's a 5.39 acre site. Um, currently it's surrounded uh, by C1 to the north, um, R R1B which is residential, uh, one family to the east, C3 to the south and uh, M2 general manufacturing to the west. Uh, the future land use map does designate this area as local commercial C1, which it is currently zoned. Um, so again, uh, the master plan would support the current zoning, that's criteria number one. Um, it is adjacent to, the, to an area plan for multifamily density to the north and the south, and medium density single family to the east and industrial to the west. Uh, the, the site uh, currently has water and sewer service and doesn't appear to have any wetlands or surface water, um, but a full survey and potential wetland delineation would be required to determine the extent of features and if any mitigation is required since it does have hydric soils. Moving on to criteria three, or consideration three, um, the applicant has not presented uh, any evidence to us that the property can't be developed under the current C1 standards. Uh, consideration four um, is whether or not it's comp the proposal is compatible with surrounding uses. Um, again, the parcel that abuts the site to the north is zoned as C1 and is vacant. Um, the single family residential abuts the property directly to the east and is developed using uh, single family standards. To the west, across Gratiot, it's vacant, zoned for general manufacturing, and to the south, across Hickey Road, is uh, general commercial and hosts a bank. Um, the proposed use is um, gas station retail and drive-through restaurants, which are likely to be more intensive than the surrounding parcels, particularly those in the of the uh, single-family residential. Uh, criteria five is if there will be uh, a burden on uh, nearby thoroughfares. And again, um, similar to the last case, we would need a traffic study to really determine the exact impact which we would expect from the change. Um, and this is particularly due to the access easement that's been proposed on Hickey Road. Uh, uh, consideration six if, is if there's other land currently available for this use. Um, again, similarly, there's limited vacant land of this acreage with that zone C3 within the community. And consideration seven, uh, will the development of the site under, 
of the site uh, under the proposed zoning be able to meet the zoning district requirements. Uh, again, we've seen a plan for the site. Um, it shows the general building layout and the driveway spacing, um, and that indicates that it may be able to meet the, meet the C3 standards, but this would be more fully reviewed in a site plan review process. Uh, consideration eight is about whether rezoning is the best option here, um, and in general, rezoning would be uh, the most appropriate way to permit this use on this site um, instead of increasing the uses uh, allowable in the C1 district. And uh, cr uh, consideration nine, um, there have been no changes since the adoption of the master plan to this site, and 10 um, is again about spot zoning, um, and a major consideration for the Planning Commission. So those three questions, is the rezoning request consistent with the master plan? And um, hopefully Jonathan will be able to pull up the, the future land use plan here, or future land use map, thank you. Um, you can see it's in the top left right now, middle left, um, that area. The second question is if the proposed zoning um, is a logical ex extension of, a, a, excuse me, of an existing zoning district in the area. Um, and so if it is rezoned, the request would be an extension of the C3 zoning that's south of the site across Hickey Road. And then finally, would approving the request grant a special benefit to the property owner or the developer? And again, this is for the Planning Commission to discuss and um, review. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, applicant, Mr. gander -Nellick. Is that better? Yep. Thank you. In the first part of the planner's report, there was a question as to the size, 5.3 versus 4.1. And I think when you look at the site plan that was submitted, there's a typographical error in the legal description. One dimension was recited three times, and so that would change the measurements. So in the assessing record, show it being the five acres, and the uh, um, tax parcel number is correct. The, uh, I just wanted to sh show to you an aerial from the County Planning Department as to this particular area of the township. Is it okay if I approach? This is G&T Auto. This is their storage facility. This is a storage mini storage. On the G&T site, there's two buildings under construction now. This is zone industrial. The uh, outside down here. Is it on? This is the vacant site. <laughs> This is where the First State Bank is. Gratiot, it's five lanes. It was built out about 10 years ago from two lanes to five. The, uh, this is where G&T has two buildings under construction. It's industrial. This piece is vacant. It's not part of the piece my client's acquiring. My client's acquiring it to build a gas Road next to the Chesterfield Township Fire Department. He has two other gas stations besides that. So in the site plan submission, as you know, you have to have C3 to have a gas station under your zoning ordinance. So that's why we're making that request. So in the site plan submission, oh. What's that? Yeah. What's that? Right. So this is Hickey Road, 
and this is the Gratiot Street entrance. So your ordinance says basically gas stations have to be on a road that has 120 feet of frontage, which Gratiot does, and it generally requires that a gas station be on a corner piece that has two road accesses. So the main entrance would be off of Gratiot, and the secondary entrance off of Hickey Road. And that's what your C3 district basically requires. So this is Gratiot and Hickey Road. Now, the property is encumbered. They haven't done a wetland study, but we know that it's partially encumbered by wetlands because if you visit the site, in the, in the back end, there's Phragmites growing, and that's what Eagle generally uses as a criteria for their determination. And there's a question as to whether or not the amount of the what, the amount of the wetland is regulated or not. And that would be established during the site plan approval process because under your ordinance for a gas station, it's a special approval land use in the C3 district. So the process is have the public hearing at the Planning Commission, you make a recommendation to the Township Board. If they grant the rezoning, then we would have to submit a more detailed site plan. It would probably be in phases, one phase as to the gas station, and then other phases as to those other buildings. And because your ordinance requires special approval land use for the gas station, there would be another public hearing at that time. My clients are in the gas station business, and sometimes people say, well, there's an odor. When the tanker comes to the facility, it turns off its engine. They're generally diesel. It's grounded. There's two pipes that run from the tanker truck, one to empty the truck by gravity, and the other, as the gasoline goes into the tank, the air is dissipated back into the tanker truck. So the idea behind that is to lessen any gas fumes that would emanate from that operation. The, uh, it's part of our submission that Gratiot is under the jurisdiction of the Macomb County Department of Roads. It's a general commercial district. It's not unusual to have C1, C3, C2 on a road similar to Gratiot. It was built out 10 plus years ago to accommodate growth in the northern end of the township. It runs just past that five lanes, just past 26 mile road. In the site plan approval process, special land use approval process, if there's a need for a traffic study, that would be determined at that point in time, not in the rezoning process. And since it's under the jurisdiction of the road department, they would be the main ones as to that issue. You have to get a driveway permit from the road department, both as to Hickey Road and Gratiot. You submit your plan, they either approve it or make modifications. A lot of the newer places along Gratiot don't have deceleration lanes because it was designed the way it is. And if they wanted deceleration lanes, they would tell us at the site plan approval engineering process. By way of illustration, last year I represented some clients on Gratiot and Lenox Township where it's only two lanes. Lenox Township wanted a, de a bypass deceleration lane because we were on the west side. We were ev eventually showed the road department and MDOT because north of New Haven Road, Gratiot is under the jurisdiction of MDOT that bypass lane wasn't necessary. The, um, with reference to evidence of developing it in its current C1, the broker's here and he'll come up in a few minutes, but it's vacant land, it's been vacant for decades. It's been for sale for a good number of years. It went through a mortgage foreclosure process 
because no one developed it. Those, that group lost it to the bank. The bank has since sold it. And so that's an indicator to me that its current zoning classification isn't appropriate and given the nature of what crash it is. With reference to the planner's comment as to consistency with the master plan, the master plan was only adopted in 2021, so there hasn't been a large time frame gone by as to when that was adopted to this current development request. And it's not unusual to have commercial enterprises abutting residential, especially when the road frontage is a road that's five lanes wide. It was built to accommodate growth in that area of the township. Just like Mr. Domingue said, he remembers when 23 was two lanes. I remember when it was two lanes. And it had indulations to it. The, um, one of the comments from the planner was, is there a benefit to the property owner or developer, my client, the potential buyer? Obviously, in any rezoning, that people wouldn't be asking for it if it wasn't of a favorable economic consequence to them. That's why they want to do it. But I'll just give you this illustration. At 21 in Gratiot, there's a strip mall with the CVS. Behind it, that was Ed Pree's farm. That property was owned C3. 10 plus years ago, I represented the property owners to get it rezoned to multifamily for senior housing. It was rejected by the township board. It sat vacant for more than 10 plus years. The township missed out, the school district missed out on increased revenues if it would have been developed. In the recent past, the township approved it for senior housing, and just recently this summer, they finally cleared the wooded area and it would appear that development is in process. I represented the Mancini's on 23 Mile Road. Their property was 25 to 30 acres. It was zoned for commercial, but it was too big for commercial. And we got it rezoned to multifamily. We closed a couple of weeks ago and the construction is underway. So as time progresses, land uses change. And this piece has been vacant just like the Mancini's. They were growing corn when I was a little bit younger. The, uh, and then it was a driving range. This piece has basically sat vacant. One of the partners in this gas station lives here in Chesterfield. They have an existing building that is in Chesterfield. So they would like it that you adopt a motion recommending rezoning to the C3 so they can proceed to the next step in the process. And I assume maybe somebody in the audience would have some comments. After that, we'd like the opportunity to respond. But given the size of the piece as shown in the drawing, the five acres and the impediment of wetlands, there would be a significant buffer region between where the buildings are and where the resident is to the east. Plus, under your ordinance, any lights that are on this facility have to basically shine down so that there's no ambient light that goes to adjacent pieces. And in modern America, with engineering and lighting, that can be accommodated. So if you had any questions, I'd try to answer them. And then uh, I'd like the broker to speak. And I assume that you probably would not make a decision tonight based on your past practice, which we have no objections to, that it would be postponed to uh, your meeting in January. And if you had any questions, I'd try to answer them. Mr. Gannon, can we let the public speak first? Sure. And then we'll bring it back to okay. you. But 
is okay that the broker speaks? No, that's okay. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Again, we have a three minute time limit. Yep. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Campana. I am the resident to the east at 29511 Hickey Road in Chesterfield, Michigan. Um, simple answer, we do not want a gas station next to my home. I don't know if you've ever driven on Hickey Road or past my house. Um, I just finished an addition on the back of my home, resided and made my home where I, someplace I wanna live for a very long time. I just brought a brand new baby home. We want to live in Chesterfield, but adding a gas station next to our home, we will move. We will not stay in Chesterfield. I purchased my home eight years ago this November. Um, the first day I lived there, we looked outside and there were deer in that property next to us. Uh, my two-year-old son looks out the window every single day and sees a mama deer and two babies that live on that property and walk back and forth through our backyards. Um, that's why we chose to live there. We chose to live there for a C1. We knew that that's what it was. We knew that potentially something could get built there. Not a gas station, not a drive through restaurant, um, not multiple drive through restaurants and a gas station. Um, uh, in addition to negatively impacting our, you know, the value of our home, um, there's a ton of traffic that comes down Hickey Road in the morning and in the evening. There's uh, two schools, multiple subdivisions. Um, trying to get out of my driveway every morning to take my son to school and go to work uh, is difficult. <laughs> to have a gas station next to my driveway would be nearly impossible to get out. Um, so to answer the traffic question, undoubtedly there would be t a ton more traffic with a gas station and an, I don't know even what kind of drive through <laughs> restaurant maybe a Culver's, it sounds like that's a terrible idea. So, um, you know, I, they don't even know what they're posing for those, those drive-through restaurants. Um, having, uh, you know, the unwanted traffic, crime at a gas station, uh, there, I, I, you know, there's research that shows there, there's increased crime at gas stations. Um, we're in a pretty quiet area, no one really bothers us, and that's an easy place for targeted people, people can, you know, their crimes can be all over, but it can be more in a secluded area. Um, you know, the fumes that would come, I know you said that they turn their car off and whatever, um, gas smells, I don't want that smell uh, in my home. I have two small children that I wanna raise there, and I, we wanna play outside. We wanna develop our property and, and live there for a really long time. I'm not gonna stay there if there's a gas station and someone's pumping their gas all hours of the evening. Um, so I don't want you to approve this rezoning. I know uh, we talked about the lights. Um, while I appreciate you saying you're gonna face the lights downward, if you look directly across the street on Gratiot, there are two new buildings. Um, one of them is a, a boot camp, a, a exercise facility. Um, their lights are facing downwards, but I just put a window that I paid money for on my addition, and I have to close my blinds every single night because it's too bright. So um, the light is going to be a problem as well. Thank you. My name is Manny Del Tala. I've uh, been a resident on Hickey Road for 31 years now, just kitty corner from the Campanas and uh, I share their concerns to some extent. Um, the fumes, the noise, uh, cooking odors, uh, trash, uh, lighting through the night has already been mentioned. Uh, we have gas stations. Uh, there's one at uh, 27 Mile in Gratiot, just two and a half miles north. We have many gas stations east and west of Gratiot, uh, south of 23 as well. There are plenty of gas stations there. There are many restaurants in that same area. Uh, we have one even just uh, a quarter mile down the road from us at uh, 24 mile road, half a mile down the road. Um, uh, I share their concerns. Uh, we've seen that area develop from uh, uh, basically woods. Uh, along with our neighbors, uh, we had 13 acres that we sold to a developer. We have approximately 40 houses behind us, uh, plus the Hickey Meadows Road right next to the one neighbor. There's a lot more traffic. Uh, twice a day we have 
uh, school traffic. And uh, during the leagues uh, at the school at night, uh, we uh, once again about seven or so in the evening, much more traffic. There's a lot going on in that area. Uh, an access road on Hickey, uh, I think would add a lot to congestion and uh, just make it not quite so pleasant to live there. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Vanessa Coverdell and I'm a resident of Hickey Meadows West, which is just um, south of that corner. Um, I don't know if you're able to expand a little bit, are you able to zoom out? Okay, so I live in that back cul-de-sac right across the street. Um, and one thing uh, you'll notice uh, where, where they're um, recommending a zone change or ap ap applying for a zone change is they talk about just south is a bank, just east is the single family or multifamily homes, to the, um, to the west is uh, commercial. But what they're not showing you is, is the middle school right there that's also on Hickey Road and the elementary that's right next to the middle school. All of the other subs on Hickey Meadow, uh, on Hickey Road, um, so you're not seeing those things. You're not seeing all of the homes on Foster. Um, and there's an elementary and a middle school right there. We currently, from our subdivision, have no sidewalks to the school or anywhere down Hickey Road. We've asked for them several times, but we have yet to see them. Um, so that's a huge concern. Our um, students, you know, after school, walking down to a restaurant or a gas station um, and not having, you know, uh, sidewalks to do so. Not to mention the 24-hour traffic that that will create, um, you know, because kids walk just in on Hickey Road uh, just to get to school. Um, one of the other things is that we do see an eagle all the time, and they mentioned that um, that was part of the uh, wetlands back there. We see an eagle all the time. He picks up our squirrels. <laughs> um, I'm concerned <laughs> about, you guys know the eagle, I'm concerned about turning left from Hickey onto Gratiot, um, just competing with the customers at the gas station or the McDonald's or whatever it is. We have a McDonald's and a gas station just at 26 in Gratiot. We have another one at 21 in Gratiot. We have one at 23 and 94. We don't need another one. Um, um, so I ask you, uh, you know, Please think about the traffic, a traffic study. Please think about sidewalks. Um, and, and gas stations are toxic to neighborhoods. It should really come as no surprise that uh, people who live nearby those um, often talk about leaked petro uh, petroleum leaking, other toxic pollutants to the air and groundwater, which is harmful to our environment. Um, gas stations are harmful to the environment. Uh, soil, groundwater, surface water, and air can be contaminated by gasoline spills, leaks, and improper disposal of gasoline. Um, accidental leaks and spills are, are one of the most common environmental problems associated with gas stations. Breathing, small amounts of gasoline vapors can lead to nose and throat irritation, headaches, dizziness. We have five children that play in that cul-de-sac every single day. Something else in right eye. They're all filled.
My name is Phil Kniglero. I live on 29672 Kevin Drive. I'm going to start off here with a letter from one of our residents. They're saying, Dear elected township officials, this letter is to discourage the rezoning of properties on northeast corner of Brashford Avenue and Hickey Road from C1 to C3. As a resident of a nearby neighborhood, we have great concerns of decreasing safety, margin, margining this rezoning will allow. It is already difficult to turn from Hickey onto Grasset because of intersecting angle, allowing additional development will further dis decrease visibility. Nearby school bus traffic use this intersection and this is a daily backup in the afternoon. We believe that rezoning will put our youth at unnecessary risk. Additionally, we believe that rezoning is against the township master plan. A recent open house hereby in February 2020 revealed that residents would like to see the area north of 24 Mile Road remain low decent and more rural in character. The plan's economic development goal calls for orderly development in appropriate locations that minimize the impacts of resident areas. Based upon the nearby, nearby neighborhood and schools in place, additional development will hinder our ability to sa safety uh, utilizing grass the plan lands use <coughs> the plan land use pattern also stated that any new development should carefully manage access points to enhance safety in the area because of grass between 23 and 26 has high nearby volumes of crashes in townships as a concerned citizen please do not authorize the rezoning of this property so we do not see any decreased safety and increase and congestion of adjacent intersections. Thank you for your consideration. My concerns also are the area itself. The road that came in and out of there is hard. Every day you go through there, you try and get out of that road. You, people are looking right, looking left, and I've seen a number of times people almost get in accidents there. You put a gas station there with the intersect with two different entrances, all you're going to do is hinder it even more. You're not going to be able to get in and out of there. We're going to have a lot of troubles through there. Therefore, I'm totally against this. I think it would be a major mistake to be putting this there. Um, basically, that's all I got to say. Thank you for listening to me. Hello, my name is Dominic Campana. I live next to the lot. Um, moving in, like my wife said, we knew it was a C1 zone. We're not trying to, we don't want a business not to move in there. We just want the protection of a C1 zone rating uh, that protects the neighborhood. Um, I just think to put a gas station there would be that close to residence. I mean, that's the whole property. We have wildlife, uh, a lot of kids. Like they said, sidewalks. We don't have sidewalks, so we're on the streets walking, and that's a different issue, though. But um, and I, to the money man or the whoever's here that built the gas station, I just want to ask him if he would put a gas station next to his house. You know, so that's it. Thank you. Hello, I'm Glenn Snell. I live two doors down from Dominic and Beth, across from Manny and Sharon. I've been there for 20 years. I've been a resident in Chesterfield since 1995. We have plenty of traffic on that road from the schools. They back up. I'm three houses off of Gratiot. It backs up to my, past my house every school day. We can't have a gas station at the end. It's, it's like the guys say, it's hard enough to pull out a gratchet as it is. The road goes on an angle. You've got to cock your vehicle to the right so you can see. Gas smells, we'll have them. Gentleman said something about corn. We'd be happy with corn fields there. We don't want the northern end of Chesterfield to be overpopulated with commercial. We've got residents coming in. 
that's plenty. Gas stations are at 26 in Gratiot, 23 in Gratiot, we got plenty of fuel. So I'm just speaking on behalf of us on, on Hickey Road, a lot of people in the subdivisions moving in, I hope they can speak up. We don't have 590 people signing some like Culver's did, but we have a few of us here tonight. Maybe that's a start. Appreciate your consideration on saying no to this gas station. Thank you. My name is Adam Coverdale. I'm uh, one of the board members at Hickey Middle West uh, Phase Two. Um, I'm Vanessa's husband. We have five kids uh, in the, our cul-de-sac. There's four others in the cul-de-sac next to ours. There's eight, I believe, and on the first road coming in, there's probably 20 kids. Um, there'll be more. I'm sure a lot of those kids are extremely young. Uh, my two oldest have their uh, permits and they're learning to drive. I don't, I have a hard time myself. I've been driving 42 years old. I've been driving since I was 16. I have a hard time getting out of that intersection. The 16 year old, he's almost got hit four times with me in the car. It's, it's a dangerous intersection. Um, and that's really what it comes down to for me is just the, the safety of that being put there and the amount of additional people that we get just coming I'm in that back cul-de-sac and there'll just be random people coming and driving through. It's just gonna bring more attention to people coming back there that don't even need to really be there. Uh, one of my kids is in middle school um, and the bus is coming in and out of there. It's just the traffic, it's, it's absolutely horrible there. Um, even if they put a light, I, I don't think it would help. That would just slow it down more because it's gonna back up traffic and it just wouldn't be a good idea. I don't agree with it at all. Thanks. John Spica, 53978 Connor Drive. What the uh, Petitioner is not telling you is it's, uh, it's, a, it's supposed to be a 24-hour gas station and a McDonald's with it. So thank, thank you to all the residents that showed up that are fighting this rezoning. When the petitioner bought the property, he knew it was C1. So the property went into foreclosure. I know he got a good deal on it. And, uh, you know, he knew it was C1. Now he wants to, you know, put a gas station on it. That gas station, this property where it's located, it's a residential area. It's not a gas station is not the proper fit there. With the school right down the road on Hickey Road, for the most doesn't have sidewalks or on either side of the road for the kids. And we have a lot of walkers that come up and down that street, pose a huge safety risk to the residents. Traffic down Hickey and Gratiot, is already an issue. And if anybody before they came before this meeting tonight went to Hickey and Gratiot where this proposed site is, you would know it would be an automatic no. I wouldn't be sitting up here speaking right now. Making a left on Gratiot is an absolute nightmare and a huge issue. We've got the bank across the street. What the attorney's not telling you is, yeah, the bank's a good fit for the community. And I'm gonna tell you why the bank's a good fit. If you look at their landscape, it's immaculate, low traffic, nine to five hours. The, it's very well lit at night and the landscape's immaculate. You walk in there, it's beautiful. But you know what, they upkeep it. You go to his gas station on 23 Mile Road or any other gas station up and down Gratiot, you see the same thing for the first six months. Yeah, it looks nice, but then afterwards, look at the landscape, look at the pumps, 
Look at the concrete or asphalt that they put there. Look at the shrubbery. They don't care. It's, it's a way to make a fast buck. That's not what we want here in Chesterfield. There is no traffic light on the corner of Hickey and Gratiot. It's very dangerous intersection. It can't handle the additional traffic and the chaos of a 24-hour gas station would cost. This property is zoned C3 and should stay C3. The petitioner was well aware of it and he, like I said, he continued with the purchase. I asked the board to remember that the petitioner has another gas station on 23 Mile Road. Now he wants to put another gas station off of Hickey and Gratiot. I'm asking you to say no to the petitioner. We've got a gas station at 21 Mile Road, 22 Mile Road, two at 23, one at 26. We have plenty of gas stations. I'm not opposed to building, but I'm, I'm opposed to changing it to a C3. Let's leave it at a C1, thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Lauren um, and I am actually in Hickey Meadows West. I'm in phase two. Um, so I have a lot of points. I'm gonna talk really fast to try to get through all this because it's obviously accumulated over time. Um, but the biggest thing that everybody keeps talking about is the traffic. That street is on an angle, but the whole map, if you seriously just zone out, it's not a main street, it's a U. It goes right back through 24 mile. So it's just a big circular motion. There's nowhere else for that traffic to go. Everybody keeps saying there's schools there. There's not one, there's not two, there's three. It's the preschool, the elementary, the middle school, and the center for TLC, which is a, it's a school for autistic children. They're a fantastic company. As far as it goes, the other thing is the sub that we live in is not completed. So it's also gonna, affect obviously our property values on top of who's going to also want to buy in there. Um, another thing for me is that it is on an angle when you go to turn out. So if you have somebody in the left turn lane, it's five lanes, you have the nice little lane for the bank, let's add that in there, plus a middle lane. Oh, did I say there's a school bus? Everybody's gotta go to work, mom's running behind, I need my coffee. It's a million and one things. It's just gonna add to the traffic and like I said, it's a circular, just 24, so there's nowhere else for it to be pushed. Even like Adam said, there's really not a good place for a light and I've tried to talk through it or even a stop, nothing would work. Especially with there being industrial businesses building on the opposite side of the street as well, adding a drive. Um, the other thing that I have is that with 24 hour, there's light pollution, gas pollution, all of those things. But I think it was a few months back, um, the bank had a hold up and all of those schools were on lockdown. A gas station only adds crime, so on top of that, what's gonna happen then to all of those schools? That's a big topic now, and I know that's not my lane, but you know, all of those schools and those parents, all of that was affected because of the bank holdup, and gas stations only have crime because it's high foot traffic as well. Um, the other thing that I was going to mention was just the rodent and pest issues that come with gas stations and or food on top of everything. I think everybody's covered, I think we've beaten the horse on traffic alone. Um, but the big thing for me is that I'm a newlywed. We moved into the sub because I liked the area. I wanted to be a little bit farther out away from the congestion, um, but I also just like the neighborhood. It's 70 homes, I don't have 530 signatures, but like, you know, the 70 I probably could get you would be pure gold because everybody, if you go down there, I joked when I first looked and said it's the Stepford community, everybody's out there with their kids. And it's really, you think it's odd until you meet them and then you're like, oh, this is just part, it's Chesterfield and that's how it is. Um, but I had somebody that wrote an email and I'm gonna read it really quickly. I'm writing this letter regarding the rezoning of the property on corner of Hickey Road and Gratiot. What a ridiculous place, their words not mine, to place and put a gas station and a fast food establishment on a corner of a busy school road. We have cars racing down Hickey Road all day long. We have no sidewalks while kids are riding their bikes, people walking their dogs and wanting to put a gas station. Thank you for your time. Uh, 
Uh, my name is Josh Miller. I'm resident of 29592 Hickey, across the street from Glenn, next door to uh, Manny. A um, few things I want to point out real quick. If you want to zoom in, I don't know if you have a measuring tool on there or not, uh, but the immediate house right next door and the house across the street are less than 300 feet away from the proposed site, which understanding is C1. Uh, there's probably a reason for that because you cannot be within 300 feet of a gas station and be able to obtain a FHA loan. Um, you are gonna definitely impact the property values as well as eligible buyers for those multiple properties within the area. So uh, that and of course the traffic. I mean the traffic's a big deal and I think with what the proposed said that it was something about doing a zoning afterwards for the traffic or a traffic uh, survey afterwards. I think it should be something that's done beforehand um, when we're looking at putting a gas station in here of whether or not we're gonna zone this to C3. That's all I have. Anybody else? My name is Brad Terrace. My wife and I just moved into uh, Foster Meadows uh, a little over a year ago. Um, we love the, the community. It's a nice little kind of tucked away little sub there. Um, the big reason why we are opposed to putting a gas station there is it's completely pointless. Like it was already pointed out, you have four gas stations down at 23 and Gratiot. You have two more at 26. All of them in that area, for some reason, are way overpriced compared to anybody else that's a 10, 15 minute drive away. I can go to our old home in Roseville and get it for 50 cents cheaper just the other day. 50 cents. And that's not one gas station, that's multiple. So why are we putting in another gas station that's gonna be overpriced, probably close up within two, three years, and now the city, which means the taxpayers, are stuck cleaning up the mess. And we're stuck with the eyesore. It's completely pointless. Thank you. Anybody else? If not, I'm gonna bring it back up to the commission. Uh, Mr. Gander Nellick, do you wanna come back up? I was taking some notes as the public made their comments. Uh, one thing that I would say, just from a personal perspective, I lived next to a gas station for 27 years, as did my 10 siblings and my parents, and 10 of the 11 siblings are still living, and no one died from living next to the gas station. As a lot of the people pointed out, the residents on the Hickey Road, Foster Road, 24 Mile Road Circle, are the generators and the school of the current traffic condition. Th this piece at the corner of Gratiot and Hickey is not gonna be generally a traffic generator for people going down Hickey Road other than people that already live in that general area that might buy gas or go to the restaurant or the other facilities and go home. Or the people that live in that general area of Lonscrew School District whose children attend the three schools that are down there. And they're the ones that exist and are the current generators of the traffic that would go down there. People that don't live down there and go to the gas station or other facility are not necessarily or high percentage gonna go down Hickey to go someplace else in the township other than if they went down Hickey to Foster and then back up 24 Mile Road to turn with the light. The, um, as to whether or not you need another gas station, I don't think that's a legitimate legal rule or process to say whether or not there's another gas station. That's not within the ambit of authority of the Township Planning Commission or the Township Board. It's a free economic enterprise system in the United States. My client has three gas stations, one here in Chesterfield. I've asked them, you know, some people said, 
gas stations are a creator of criminal activity. He hasn't had any criminal activity at his gas station on 23 Mile Road. So it's kind of a speculative statement when people say that. Now, there may have been the bank robbery, and banks periodically get robbed. And if there's a school in close proximity, given the nature of things in America in the last 10 years, it's appropriate for the school to lock it down. And just to say that there's crime that occurred someplace doesn't mean that there's gonna be crime at this particular location. My client's gas stations generally run from six o'clock in the morning to midnight. That would be his game plan, his business process at this location. One person indicated that supposedly there's a McDonald's going in there. There's no McDonald's in this plan. There is drive-through, but the rezoning is at issue, not the ultimate site plan approval. And if it's a special land use, whether it's a gas station or a drive through facility that requires special approval land use, there'll be another hearing. And my client, through his architect and engineer, will have to submit a site plan that meets the appropriate requirements of the zoning ordinance or obtain variances. So those issues would be addressed at that time. Same way with reference to the traffic study. If the township has no jurisdiction over either road because they're, they're under the jurisdiction of the Macomb County Department of Roads, they make the determination. And they make it based on engineering studies or a traffic study that my client would authorize at that stage of the process, not at this particular stage. And as I indicated in my first address, the property's been for sale, it's been foreclosed, that's an indicator that there's no market for SC1, and we'd like it to be rezoned to C3. Thank you. Thank you. I'll bring it back to the commission, Mr. Demink. A lot of good comments from the residents that live in the area. We'll take everything into consideration. That's all I have. Mr. Burkhart, Burkhart. I want to thank everyone for being here. We are listening, so thank you for coming out. No, I have no questions regarding rezoning. Mr. Renault. Yes, I have no questions with regards to the rezone. Mr. Jaworski. I have no questions this evening. Uh, nothing for me. Mr. Leonard. I'm all set myself. Thank you. I don't have any questions. I do have a comment, though. Okay. If it's, uh, if it's appropriate at, at this time. Um, the master plan does um, does support what is, um, what is proposed this evening. Um, it is compatible with the area. And... Um, you know, so I'll certainly consider all of uh, what is said this evening. Thank you. I also have three letters that oppose the rezoning from residents in that area. Um, our normal procedure is to wait till our next meeting. Our next meeting is in January. So I'm going to make a motion to close the public hearing and then we'll wait till January to make a decision on it. Okay. We have a motion by Mr. Miller, supported by Mr. Renault. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I'm good.
the 3rd of January. Yes, that's when we'd like it. Thank you. Twenty two dash eleven special land use M two nine point five nine acres west side of Grashid north of twenty three mile parcel ID is one five zero nine one seven three two six zero zero seven. The address is five one five three one. I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. Supported. We have a motion by Mr. Miller, supported by Mr. Demink. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Mr. Kirk. Good evening, Bob Kirk, 19500 Hall Road, Clinton Township, Michigan, here on behalf of the developer. Uh, other nights during the month, I sit on that side of the table, so I know what to do tonight, be brief, and I will be brief. Uh, we're here for special land use approval. The site, the site is zoned uh, for our use, which is a car wash uh, as M2. Special land use ordinance has nine factors. I've submitted a letter uh, addressing all those factors. I believe we meet those factors. They're the usual ones, traffic, noise, size, whether it's harmonious with the area. We've also asking for site plan approval tonight. With me is Kaylee Bellington, Bevington, excuse me, from Pittsburgh actually, with the Bowler Engineering Group, uh, who can answer any questions in that regard. We are asking for special land use and request your consideration. Thank you. Ms. Osborne, can you um, tell the public what's... Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, tonight, uh, as the applicant said, they're looking to, um, uh, for special land use approval, which will come um, not at tonight's meeting, but at a following meeting. Um, so tonight's really focused on the site plan review. Um, the applicant is proposing to remove the three existing one-story buildings that are currently on the property and build <coughs> Um, a cold tunnel building to use, be used as a car wash. Um, the site will also include a canopy, a triple vacuum building, and a trash enclosure. There are a couple of items that are outstanding um, or that I want to draw your attention to. Um, one is the approval of the canopy placement. Um, the, there is a canopy that is um, located 7.8 feet from the lot line. And um, there is a provision that uh, in section 5.40.B.1 um, that allows accessory buildings such as this canopy to be located in the front or side yard in non-residential districts upon planning commission approval. So that's one thing to discuss tonight. Um, per usual, uh, you're charged with uh, reviewing um, the landscape plan the building frontage materials and mitigation of nuisances such as noise, odor, and uh, limits on equipment and machinery on the property. Uh, I will note that uh, in my uh, review letter, I did uh, say that l there was a lighting detail that was missing. We did receive that from the applicant and it is in compliance, um, so we don't have to worry about that tonight. Uh, the last item is the bullard height and color. Um, they have bullards in several places throughout their property and um, some are in compliance. The ones that are not um, are those in, that are not in the parking area but are in building corners, fire, near fire hydrants, water and gas meters, sprinkler and transformers that are five feet in height instead of the maximum four feet tall. Um, and the, the, those are proposed to be painted traffic yellow uh, which does not meet your uh, requirements of a natural earth tone color. Um, let's see. That is all for now. Thank you. Thank you. I'll bring it back uh, to the public and see if they have any questions regarding this public hearing. If none, I'll bring it back up to the to the commission, Mr. Demink. No questions. Mr. Burkhart? No questions. Mr. Carr? Uh, yes, um, a couple things. One, uh, regarding the bollards, um, I, I do agree that the bollards, um, 
you know, if they're uh, out of sight line from the public, I think yellow is can be acceptable. Um, but if they are in sight line of the public, I think they should be at match our ordinance because that is kind of the, the purpose of it. So I think that that can be addressed. My biggest concern is is really just the traffic flow. I mean, looking at the, this layout, it's, uh, I, I think it's not very good. Um, you know, from a traffic flow perspective, we're going, they're going and they're having, so I looked at, the, I read through the noise study, and the noise study actually had a, a pretty decent conceptual layout, at least with traffic pattern. When I look at this layout, you're, they're, you're, you're, the two exits out of the area are going against what traffic patterns in, in the United States kind of go by. You know, you're making a left, you're gonna have people make a left while people are coming straight up to try to get in queue for the pay line, which kind of goes against, especially if they're stacking. So the way you show stacking, you show stacking on the left side, which is kind of on the northwest, but so you're gonna make people make a left going opposite like you're in England or something. <laughs> You know, so they're gonna be driving on the, on the left side of the road while, while you know, opposite traffic's on the right side and it's the opposite of what we have here. And I just, you know, and then when you look at your southwest exit, it's the same thing. You're gonna have someone make a U-turn going against grain while people are making a right-hand turn into queuing. And you're gonna make people make a left-hand turn against both those traffic patterns in a U-shape to get out and you know, so from a, this is a site plan approval. Personally, from a site plan approval, I think that this has, to me, issues um, on a private property that can have traffic issues and, you know, potential vehicular issues. Um, you know, I mean, that's just, you know, from my perspective. So, I mean, I have concerns about the layout, uh, the building materials and all that stuff I didn't have too big of an issue with. Um, and nor did I have an issue with the encroachment on the, the north side with that canopy. I, I mean, that personally, I think they have more than enough space to not do seven feet, um, but I can be open to that. My biggest concern though is definitely the traffic flow on this site, um, especially when, like I said, when I saw the noise study, the noise study had a nice conceptual plan that had, that actually addressed it, you know, that had them, everybody exiting on the, southwest side like a normal person you so you can make a right to go back in a queue or you make a left to go out on grass it uh, i think this creates a lot of a lot of potential conflicts from a site plan approval perspective from my uh, expertise that's it okay thanks mr renault uh, oh my one concern was just addressed thank you all set thank you uh nothing from me I'm all set myself, thanks. Mr. Renau? I'm all set, thank you. I have no questions. With that, um, do we have to make a decision tonight or can we table it until the next meeting? Jonathan? Yeah, it's a public hearing, so uh, per your bylaws, you would typically uh, postpone a decision to the next meeting uh, unless you wanted to waive those rules no. tonight. We'll make a motion to close the public hearing and wait to our January 3rd meeting to make a decision. So I make a motion to close the public hearing. Supported by Mr. Leonard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Now we need a, we make a motion to table postpone. Being that there was very minimal uh, issues here with our site plan and our special land use, we have a ZBA meeting coming up next week. Would the commission consider voting tonight on this? I mean, we have nothing to do for a couple of weeks. No one's here against it. Well, we thought we would wait till after the ZBA meeting to give our decision. But the ZBA is a kind of a plus here because we're probably proposing kind of a less passive use in the rear, so that's why we're like to have a decision on it if we could but. well we're we're looking we have a zba hearing to split off the back property probably for a less intensive use 
Uh, there will be no traffic issues. So we'd like to know, have a decision on this today if we could, so we know where we're at before the ZBA meeting. I'll pull the commission to see if they want to vote tonight. It's entirely up to you. Your, by, your bylaws and your, your ordinance defers to your bylaws, and your bylaws indicate that the decision is made at the next meeting. But if a majority of you decide that you want to waive your bylaw requirements, you can do that. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, can I just, um, point of clarification, sure. we're just voting on the special land use. We're not really going over site plans or traffic right. patterns or anything like that tonight, correct? Site plans. Uh, site plans. We are. Yeah. That's what I just I want to clarify. And because right. on here it says special land, land use. I don't see anything referenced to site plans, so I want to clarify that. I'll pull the commission to see if they want to vote tonight. Mr. Jaworski? Um, Wait till next meeting. Mr. Klonowski? Next meeting. Mr. Leonard? Postpone it. Mr. LaBelle? Wait till the next meeting. Mr. Renault? Next meeting. Mr. Carr? Aye. Mr. Brokart? Next meeting. Mr. Domingue? Next meeting. I also will wait till the next meeting. So with that, we'll need a motion to postpone till January 3rd. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to um, postpone making a decision until uh, January 3rd, 2023. I'm sorry, that just wanted to just give you that extra time. Okay, it's not working. Yeah, um, the other, the, I did have one other comment because if uh, you are going to get table, I also didn't see on your dumpster enclosure, I didn't see the um, your materials that you're making it out of. Did I miss it? The only thing I saw was a standard detail and it doesn't show anything in regards to the materials. The materials would match the building. I don't know if it was included in the package you got or not, but we could provide um, we could provide an elevation showing it if we're yeah. gonna table anyway. Yeah, um, we would have to definitely, because that would be one of my things for site plan approval is we have to see that material. Yeah, I thought it was part of the standard package, but I'll take a look at it and yeah, um, I didn't, we can get that to you. I might have missed it. That's okay. Uh, just for your knowledge though, it, ma it would match the building material. It would be the, okay. the split place stone. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to um, postpone making a decision until January, tw January 3rd, 2023. Um, based upon um, the poll that was given this evening, as well as uh, there is an opportunity for the applicant to uh, go in front of ZBA on December the 14th. We have a motion by Mr. Yeah. Bell, supported by Mr. Miller, all in favor? Aye. 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 Turn your mic on. Asking for approval on a Class A non-conforming use to expand existing car wash, C1, 1.1 acres, northwest corner of 23 Mile and Nicolette Drive, parcel ID number 1509-400-045, addresses 32685-23 Mile. Make a motion to open the public hearing. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Miller, supported by Mr. Renault. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The applicant here? Oh, wow. I'm sorry. Jonathan, do you want to explain? This is the one you wanted to do, right? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so this one, um, they have another location also on Gratiot. They submitted at the same time for both locations to make some modifications. Um, we did approve the one on Gratiot administratively, and in reviewing this one, uh, came to our attention that the underlying zoning is actually C1 commercial, uh, which made the car wash non-conforming. Um, be a class B status by our ordinance. The ordinance does state that a, any non-conforming use would be a class B unless granted class A status by the planning commission. Um, the ordinance states the planning commission shall have the sole authority to designate a non-conforming use a class A non-conformity, non-conforming use upon the finding that continuance of the non-conforming use would not be contrary to the public health, safety, or welfare, 
or the spirit and intent of this chapter. The use does not and is not likely to significantly depress the value of nearby properties. The use was lawful at the time it, of its inception and no useful purpose would be served by strict application of the provisions or requirements of this chapter, which the use does not conform. So with that, it's in front of you tonight with um, some site plan changes they wanna do, uh, modify some circulation on the site, um, add some vacuum spaces, and then um, relocate employee parking spaces. Um, I know that Mr. LaBelle did have some comments that he wanted to make regarding some stuff, so I'll leave that to him and then I can answer any questions you might have for me. Just a few questions, um, I, and I don't know if we can put it up on the, on the screen or not. In the, uh, in the circulation of your driveway, there's a dumpster. There's a dumpster location with, uh, with gates on it, which that dumpster material meets and exceeds what um, the building is currently big, being built of. And um, the placement of that dumpster enclosure, so if you have a garbage truck come in to empty the dumpster, he actually has to back into the employee parking spots in order to orient his, his truck in order to get, the, to, to get access to that dumpster. There isn't enough room there. What I would suggest you do is you rotate that dumpster maybe 30 or 40 degrees, 45 degrees, so that he can grab that, put it back in the enclosure rather than just leaving it in the aisleway like they do, and, um, and then that way you can close the gates. That's, that's one of my comments. My second comment is um, you have four parking spaces for employees. Do you feel that that's enough? This is a question to you. Uh, to introduce myself, my name is Erin McMacken. I'm a civil engineer with Stonefield Engineering. We're based out of Detroit. Um, just a quick little share. I grew up in Chesterfield, attended middle school East, graduated Lance Cruz North in 2012, so kind of a full circle moment for me to be back here tonight presenting in front of you all. Um, your point to the dumpster, <laughs> that's something that we've told Whitewater over and over again as a civil engineer, and it's just part of their prototypical site. So what they do is they actually exit the truck, pull out the dumpster from the enclosure and pick it up that way. Um, but I can certainly present back to them rotating the dumpster, and I know that they would accept it um, as the board has recommended. So we can go ahead and when we do seek site plan approval, we can make that change with the dumpster. Um, in terms of employees, uh, yes, four is the maximum that they have on site at any time, um, especially when a new location opens is when you see those four employees, and then typically it tapers back down to three. Um, but four would be the maximum number of employees on site. Okay, well that is the get, that is the, um, the car wash that I use. I've got the yearly pass, and um, there was five employees there last week. Oh, okay. So, and, th and that is a concern of mine. The, the last concern that I have, and um, you know, there's certain, our, our ordinance does allow the, um, the vacuum pumps are awfully close to the property line. Is there any other way, or is there any other position that you can put those so they're not so close to the property line? There's a vacuum pump on the east end on the west side of your property. Can you move those a little bit away so from the property lines? Both rows of vacuums. Uh, do the drive aisles and the widths of those drive aisles? Uh, no, it potentially would have to look at eliminating vacuums and then just with the building centered in the center of the site. No, I'm talking about the pumps, the actual mechanical unit that is. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so those do have to be in line with the vacuum to function and provide them all, but you know we do show some screening around it and we can buff up the screening if that is something of concern. Because they are noisy. Okay, yeah. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you. No, the only question I have, I wish they'd put guys back out to dry them off again because the blowers don't yeah, work. We miss that, don't we? <laughs> Mr. Burkhart? No questions. Mr. Carr? No, no, I have no questions. I'm good. Mr. Renault? Nope, I'm set on this one. Mr. Jaworski? No questions. Mr. Kalowski? Uh, did the, now, I was reading through the uh, non conforming rules. And one of the things before you move it to a class, uh, class A, you have to check and see if the non-conforming, if there was any restrictions placed by the Planning Commission in the past. For the, have you looked into that? I did pull the old file and it was just a, a standard um, site plan, I believe special <coughs> land use as well, that was approved with no conditions on it. Okay, thank you. Mr. Leonard? I'm all set, thank you. Mr. LaBelle? 
Any other questions by the commission or anybody from the audience? If not, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Report. We have a motion by Mr. Miller, supported by Mr. Renault. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Normal procedure is to wait to our next meeting. If you would like, I would pull the, uh, the commission to see if they want to vote tonight. Yeah, that would be great. You know, okay. again, we're going to be seeking site plan approval okay. once this is granted. Mr. Jaworski? Mr. Klonowski? Tonight. Mr. Leonard? Tonight. Mr. LaBelle? Tonight. Mr. Miller? Tonight. Mr. Renault? Tonight. Mr. Carr? Tonight. Mr. Burkhart? Tonight. Mr. Tonight. With that, I would entertain a motion. Mm -hmm. Mr. Miller, I'd like to, I'd like to uh, make a motion to uh, recommend approval for Whitewater Auto Wash Class A non-conforming use site plan, asking for proposal for the approval on the Class A non-conforming use to expand their existing car wash. As part of my um, motion, I'd like to include that um, we've asked the applicant to rotate the dumpster housing enclosure so that the garbage man can uh, can get to it, and um, there's uh, there really isn't any reason at all that this can't um, that, that that this can't continue on as a uh, a non-conforming site. With that, I'll make a motion to approve. We have, we have Mr. Mr. Chairman, just a point of clarification: it's not a recommendation. Uh, the Planning Commission is the uh, approving authority for it. So, oh, really? Okay, then I'll change my uh, my motion. That um, I'll make a motion to approve. <laughs> so as stated. Continued support with a question. question go ahead Did you still Mr. have any concerns about um, the vacuums? She said that they're going to that they're going that there's enclosures around them. And the parking. Okay, with the, okay, that's it. Continued support. We have a motion by Mr. LaBelle, supported by Mr. Leonard. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you all. Have a great night. quick as I can. Item A is sign review 2022-61. Um, this is for the uh, urban smoke located at 27785 23 Mile Road. It was tabled on 11-1-2022. 20, 20, um, the applicant came back again with a, uh, a sign that was non-conforming. It was 35 square feet. Um, he, um, in deliberation, he agreed to reduce the sign to 27 square feet. Uh, with that, I will make a motion to approve. We have a motion by Mr. LaBelle, supported by Mr. Renault. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item B is Austin Catholic Academy Facility, 2022-04. Uh, 20, the applicant has asked um, that we postpone making a decision. Make a motion to postpone making a decision up to six meetings. Support? We have a motion by Mr. LaBelle, supported by Mr. DeMake. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Item C is Lefty's Cheesecake, 2022-08. It's a special land use, C3. Um, it's located on the north side of 23 Mile Road between Nicolette and DW Seaton Drives. Um, the applicant has, um, has come in front of uh, ZBA with ZBA's approval with the, uh, the, ten f the ZBA way, the 10-foot buffer required in our ordinance. Um, the applicant has gone through and um, made adjustments wherever we've, we have asked him to do so in the past. Um, one thing that, um, will, that is part of my motion is that um, he will provide a photometric study, but that will be handled administratively. We requested this study at least three times, and um, he, he gets the point tonight. Um, as part of my motion, the, um, he's still deficient in his tree amount. He's deficient by two trees. The applicant has agreed to uh, put money in escrow to um, enhance Chesterfield Township in the future. Uh, the township um, folks are um, in the process of creating a, a, um, a tree account for such instances. There just isn't any place else to put these two trees. So he's willing to, to put those trees elsewhere in the township. Um, also, um, with, because there isn't the 10-foot buffer, there is a, um, a concern about the uh, circulation of cars through the rest of the parking lot. The applicant, as is drawn on the drawing, 
um, is going to have striping to identify the, um, the uh, drive-through. The um, motion also includes that um, there is a, um, a site plan approval and um, we're also asking for the approval for the special land use. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. We have a motion by Mr. LaBelle for it, supported by Mr. Renault. Is this a, um, is this a recommendation? Seeing it is closed. There was a, uh, we, one of the other conditions we wanted, yeah, the, yeah, the reciprocal agreement for that to be clarified that it does include lefties. The, the I, I don't know if Bob wants to explain yeah, it better the, than I can. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a minor point tonight, but, but bef before they essentially start building, we need to see that reciprocal easement agreement. We talked about it a couple of meetings ago. You've already done the agreement, but it's between two entities neither of which I recognize. It doesn't have lefties cheese on it at all. It is between, as a matter of fact, as long as we're got lots of time left, it is between, uh, it is between uh, Bayside Condominium Association and Metro One Investments. I, I don't know where lefties fits in there, but they can easily fix this. So the bottom line is, before they start doing anything, we're gonna, I'm gonna have to see the reciprocal easement agreement cleaned up so that it clearly indicates that that site is bound by this agreement so that we'll have that reciprocal ingress and egress. That's also included in my motion, and uh, that can be handled administratively. We have a motion by Mr. LeBell, supported by Mr. Renault. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. The last item is item D, Forestville Wait, Estate. Excuse me. Thank you very much. Okay. One question. How do we get um, the proper administrative paperwork? Uh, so get it over to Jonathan Palin. He'll get it over to me. I'll look at it and we're done. It, it's, it's simple for you guys to do. I just, I can't tell from the document where you're, where this business fits into that. I don't recognize either of the entities, that's all. Yeah, it was part of my motion. Okay. Thank you for being patient this evening. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're not the last one, though. We still got one more. <laughs> you can stay. The last item is uh, Forest View Estates 2022-06. The applicant has asked just us to uh, table any decision being made this evening. He, um, he recognizes the fact that he's missing um, quite a bit of information and it's not fair to the township uh, offices to handle everything that's missing administratively. So with that, I'll make a motion to table. Support, we have a motion by Mr. LaBelle, supported by Mr. Renault. All in favor? Aye. Aye. minutes of November 1st, 2022. We have a motion by Mr. Miller, supported by Mr. Renault. All in favor? Aye. Opposed, motion passes communications. There is none. Appointment of officer. First off, I'd like to thank Jerry Alexi for his years of service to the Planning Commission and to the Township. Um, and with this, we have to appoint another officer, vice chair. Do I have any volunteers? Carl Leonard, anybody else want to volunteer? A lot. Look, look, hey. Hey, Brian, you have to remember to show up to tree planting. I'll wait till I'm 60 and then I'll volunteer. Wow. I'll make a motion to appoint Carl Leonard as vice chairman. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Miller, supported by Mr. LaBelle. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Approval of the minutes of Mr. Chairman. 23. Uh, you you got to do all, all officers. It's an annual appointment, so you got to do all officers. I don't think so. I think it was waited on because we weren't sure on appointments. Oh. 
Unless right. you guys recall that differently. Anybody else want to run for chairman? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a uh, motion to approve Paul Miller as chairman. Support. We have a motion by Mr. LaBelle, supported by uh, Ms. Mr. <laughs> I know. Klinowski. <laughs> you got these, they got me all nervous. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We need to make a secretary. I'll make an, uh, a motion to appoint Rick LaBelle as secretary. We have a motion by Mr. Miller, supported by Mr. Demink. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. The 2023 uh, meeting dates. I'll make a motion to approve. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Miller, supported by Mr. Demink. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? M motion passes. Planners report, Ms. Osborne. I'll keep it brief. I'm um, wishing you all a happy holiday season. And in 2023, you can look forward to some zoning ordinance amendments. Jonathan yes. and I, I know you're thrilled. Jonathan and I will be putting together a list to uh, get, your, get your thoughts going on those in January, probably. So have a great holidays. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Palin, you have anything? Nothing tonight. Okay. Audience participation, I think we got rid of all of them. <laughs> Communications from individual commissioners. Mr. Jaworski. Mr. Klonowski. Yeah, yeah, there's different, but you got to remember only four of you can be together and only three board members can go. Who would, who would we uh, contact for that, Jonathan? Let you know what dates or whatever we'd, we'd be. Okay. Mr. Leonard, welcome to the jungle. jungle. Yeah, thanks. I'm taking off next meeting. That's okay. <laughs> uh, I'd like to uh, wish everybody a great holiday and uh, against my better judgment, I would like to include Brian in that. <laughs> Mr. LaBelle. Oh, I'd like to wish everybody happy holidays as well as looking for volunteers for pre-planning on January the 3rd. I would love to. <laughs> you would? I will do it. You want, you, to, you want me to remind you the day before? Uh, I expect a text from Mr. Miller. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> it, the 3rd is a Tuesday, right? The night of our meeting. Yeah, I can make it. I'm not traveling that week. Okay, great. Tuesday's the night of our meeting. Uh, Sorry, down there, Mr. Domingue, you know, do you have anything? Do <laughs> you have anything you want to say? Yeah. Hey everybody, have a good holiday. Hopefully, I'm here on the third. If I'm not, I'll be in Florida at my buddy's house for a week or two weeks. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Mr. Burkhart. I'm all set. Thanks. Don't blame okay. me. Uh, Mr. Carr. Yeah, I'm yeah, thinking. Merry Christmas. Uh, Mr. Renault. Yeah, happy holidays. I'm looking forward to those. Uh, Did that bank really get robbed? Did that branch really get robbed? So. We'll have fun in 2023, I can guarantee you that. I just wanted to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and see you in January. With that, I'll make a motion to adjourn.